what's up everyone this is soji talk your weekly shot of k-pop we're coming at you with a super spicy episode 244 and we're recording on july 17th 2023 i'm doug and joining me today we got warren hey what's up everybody and anita hello as a quick reminder check out soji talk on your favorite podcast platform sub to us on youtube and join the soji talk discord and be a part of the nation our after hours topic this week is a sandwich world cup so we're gonna debate which is the best sandwich so that should be pretty mm-hmm. fun uh, I was out last week. Y'all know it. Yes. It, it kind of happened all of a sudden. Um, mm. The way I'll say it is, my sister and my nephew and my brother-in-law were over, and then all of a sudden we found out another family member is heading like, like past us to go somewhere else. Mm. So they decided to stop for dinner, and like I thought they were coming one time, but they came later. So I had a, I, I I couldn't be here to record. So that's what happened. Yeah. Oh. All right. Family thing came up. Things it was happened. A party. Mm. Yeah. Was the food good? Yes, it was. It was a sandwich subs that day. <laughs> oh, you, you guys were preparing for the World Cup we today. Then I, I tried many of them. We were preparing. <laughs> um, big new releases again. We are going to do more than the standard three. We're doing four this week. Mm-hmm. We're in that summer mode where there's just a lot of songs. Like it's kind of unavoidable. Yeah. But uh, we're yeah. covering four. End mix title track party o'clock. Uh, we already covered the pre-release roller coaster. The, I w- is it a re-debut of Odd Eye Circle? It sort of is, because they're now under Mod House with Air Force One. Mm-hmm. Um, we have BTS Jungkook solo debut with Seven featuring Lado. And we have NCT Dream ISTJ. Uh, we covered the pre-release Broken Melodies, so this is the title track for that one as well. First song, Party O'Clock from JYP. Last three songs, Roller Coaster, Love Me Like This, Young Dumb Stupid. Whenever we talk about a title track that we covered the pre-release of, mm, there's yeah. going to be a there's going to be a comparison. It's inevitable, right? Yeah. Um, mm. I think that's pretty fair. Roller coaster's a better song. I don't know how to tell oh. you this. It is. Oh, oh, oh. oh is it okay. not? Is it not? Does anyone disagree with me? Well, well, why do you? Why do you? Why do you think that way? Let's hear your defense first. I feel that. This party o'clock suffers from weird arrangement choices where mm, mm-hmm. it kind of feels like there's a lot going on in this song. Uh-huh. And this song also has like a hair massaging commercial in the middle of it, which completely ruined my immersion. <laughs> Did that, oh. that, was that not the weirdest thing in this the entire comb, The thing? hair combing. Yeah. yeah, hair comb commercial that just happened randomly in the mu- music video. Is, is that... That's what you do with your homies, right? You stand in a line and you comb each other's <laughs> hairs. Hey, if you, you want to go human centipede combing each other's <laughs> hair, yo, y'all can do that. I ain't doing that. Um, <laughs> Wait, so it was product placement? I didn't realize. It, it had to have been. It had to have oh. been. They show the ad name on each kid's hand. Like, they make oh, sure see. not to cover it, you know? Um, oh, so that also happened. That that threw off my immersion. Well, um, you know, I'm glad they're you know getting their funds one way or the other. <laughs> like, hey, this right? is the group yeah. that started off with the popcorn and zero coke. You that remember? That's true. Like, that is true. That is true. <laughs> so it's kind of like that. Um, I think the main thing to suffer from, additionally, is this the the chant the sing chant thing in the in the chorus in the verses. I mean, I it's, agree with that. It's, yes, it's not good. Yes, it's not good. Right. I feel like at first I thought like okay it's 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 a good addition in certain areas but I feel like it was used a little too often that if I feel like it it kind of lost the effect that it was looking for maybe um so I I agree with that I I did notice that it was happening a lot and and I feel like so there were parts where Ji was doing it and then there's parts where Lily's doing it and I'm talking about the first verse oh um, yeah mm-hmm. Ji is the Ji is the she's doing the section where it's like it's party time pa 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 that part. And then mm-hmm. Lily is playing the kind of like uh, call and response response section to hey buckle up get ready you know that part mm-hmm. and Lily <laughs> why are you laughing mm-hmm. <laughs> um, yeah, I like how on, you did that. I like how you did that yeah L- Lily is like such a talented vocalist she's like amazing where I feel like this is a bit of an underutilization almost. And mm. I feel like that could, that part could have been a different kind of response. I, I understand the need for a call and response. You know what I mean? That's a great way to do things. Hey, buckle up, get ready, get ready to dance. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> I don't know. I, I do agree with you. There's a lot of like sing rappy things, especially that stood out to me, especially particularly because I don't feel like that's. MX's strongest suit. Um, even mm. with you, this that seems to be her thing. She's done that with the previous tracks as well. 
Um, and I feel like she's shined a little bit better when she's playing a vocal role as she did in Roller Coaster. Oh, I don't know. Um, this does feel more like an NMix track than the um, Roller Coaster track did. It feels more K-pop too. It has mm. more mm-hmm. of those K-pop cliches, like one of like the sing rappy things. Um, but it follows more of like a kind of like a UK garage kind of rhythm. Um, it's very poppy. It doesn't do anything mix poppy. They didn't. Nah, nah. The, not to the extent that we know they could. Nah. Remember, yeah. Anita, I told you that's not going to happen this time around. It didn't happen no. this time around. I mean, and I'm kind of glad in a way. I I was under the impression that maybe they would go a different route because the pre-release was kind of more on the, I guess, st- stereotypical... Um, structure of a K-pop song, right? They didn't do the switch up on that one either. I think they kind of they kind of mention it a little bit. I want to I want to recall that they say the end mix switch up part a little bit when they do a bit bit more of a dance break um, towards the end, and that makes sense because I feel like it's just a tiny bit of a Wait, switch. We're not are, completely changing the genre. So, sorry, are you talking about roller coaster with the switch up and mix switch up or this one? This one. This one. They like she's say talking it. At, she's talking at like two eighteen when they scream and mix, and then they go like to the chanty rapping into the dance thing, right? Mm. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I guess that could count. But it's it's very subtle. It's nothing like they did before. Yeah. No. So, I wouldn't. Yeah. No. I appreciate that. Yeah. The b- between roller coaster and 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 shoot, what is it called? Party o'clock. I definitely feel like mm-hmm. they're playing it a lot safer. They're playing it a lot more pop yes, heavy. Yes, that, that's that's for sure. And so far, I don't hate it. In fact, if anything, Ooh. Roller Coaster has been the summer song of the year for me so far, like midway into July. Wow. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's been like if you're yeah, it's been like consistently on my charts. I'm like listening to it. I think it's like up there in the second most K pop listened song of the month for me. Like it's it's a it's a vibe, you know? I mean, wow. you know what I mean? Um, I listen to Roller Coaster and I listen to the La Seraphim Bluebeard wife thing like back to back always. <laughs> boom, 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 boom. <laughs> oh, I just have to listen to those two. I think that the elements of Edmix that we like are uh, are highlighted more in this style of music they're doing with this comeback cycle, right? Uh-huh. They're vocally very heavy now, which I think is the the, the main power point same. of Edmix. That's their main drawing card to me is like the, the vocals, right? Same, same, Particularly... Same, same, same. As we always say, Lily, Heewon, um, Soryun, those those kids, right? They they stand out a lot when they sing. I, and I, it's great. Soryun, honestly, like she hasn't stood out that much to me so far. This track, it really stood out when she was doing the bridge into the first chorus. Her vocal tone, I was like, man, okay. Like if we sing her on, a, if if we have her on a bit of a lower register, like, she sounds great. She sounds amazing. That voice tone is really coming out, and 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 that was really great. And. That combined with the really like catchy top line in the chorus, like "Come on over chorus. right now, come on over right now." That thing is like so nice. catchy. I love the chorus. I also want to say that uh, talking about their vocals, the live stages have been really nice too. Um, the choreography is very jumpy; like they do a lot of um, jumping moves and transitions, but they're very stable. Um, mm. I know some of their dance practices have been a little viral because of them also singing while they're dancing oh, um and it sounds pretty they're very good. good at that yeah they're very right good at so that. i i don't know i'm very impressed by this comeback as well what do you know they're singing while they're doing then their dance practices <laughs> oh my yeah. goodness it's like they're performing so um <laughs> if if you if you are not on the boat that solian's like a really really good singer she did a an appearance on imujin's service which is like his oh. youtube show mm-hmm. Yeah. She basically just sang a cappella song while he's sitting there, right? Uh-huh. She she sang Yunha's Waiting, which is one of her songs. It oh like, yeah, yeah. It was like S tier good. Oh wow. I was like, nice. I was thoroughly impressed by the singing. I was like, damn. Like I I always thought, you know, she's like the the third best vocalist in this crew, and I could be convinced she's higher up. That was my main takeaway. Um, mm. which is which is good because that means they have a bunch of riches in this group vocally, right? All the members mm-hmm. are pretty good at singing in this group. Um. That being said, with this party o'clock, I, I, it's not like it's nothing that the girls could have done. It's the song choice, right? It's how they put it together, which is the main thing that I, I'm not the biggest fan of with this one. Um, mm. being said, it's not like it's a bad song. It's just 
I don't think so. It's just like, <laughs> I don't know why you just, why did you decide to chant over here? You know, like, when why, you, why are we chanting? When you preface it with, it's not a bad song. That sounds like it's a bad song. <laughs> no, it's not a bad song, though. It's just there's, there's some no. problems with it. Which I think it's like, I think that's fair. There are definitely parts that I'm willing to sit through to get to the chorus or like the bridge. It's, it's I will 100% agree yeah. with that. It's yeah. a very fun adventure. It's, it's a very fun adventure. I'm not a fan of the chanty rap part. But other than that, nothing but high fives here. Is that a thing people say? Nothing but high fives? It's not, is it? <laughs> well, it is that now. Could be. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm making it a thing. <laughs> All right. Okay. Um, I overall think that this uh, comeback cycle for Nmix was very successful. Like, yes. and I watch and Warren watches some of the uh, like the variety stuff they do or the YouTube <laughs> stuff they do, like the non K pop stuff, right? Like the, yeah. the funny mm. things. Yeah. It, I, I don't know how to put this, but their non music makes them rise higher on the chart of the groups that I like. Do you know what I'm saying, mm. Warren? Yeah, no, no. no I, 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 Personality you, appeal. Yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Hey one, hey like, one in particular, like like. Yeah, old hey ones like V like lives are like hilarious. The, the stuff that's just coming out of her mouth the whole uh, time. Honestly, I don't know how much of it like you guys will pick up on unless you're Korean, but like she knows like all the deepest memes of like this like <laughs> generation and before yeah. her. I'm like, um, yeah, that's like good. the her like. Do you know the T meme, Doug? Which one? The the Tia no. Cutie, pretty. No, never mind. Okay. I've, no, I've seen that. I've seen that, seen that, but I didn't know what it was. Yeah, that I've seen went that before. Completely bi- viral. Like people know who Nmix is. Like, oh, really? that's good. Yeah, I know. Um, hmm. I don't know. For the most part, right? We've had some ups and downs with their with their disco- discography now, right? We've had yep. stuff like Oh and Dice. We've had stuff like Roller Coaster. We've had stuff like um, How You Like, like this. this. I like that song. Yeah, we like this. I kind of like the direction they're going in. I feel like mm. if we're talking about them and a trajectory, like a stock, they're on the up. They're on the up. Ooh. I would, say. Ooh. Right? I would agree. I would Bye now. Their, I would change their rating from like, if we go baseline, right? At yeah. the beginning, I was like, oh, sell, 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 sell. Yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then we stabilized with some of the like, I, I honestly thought Young Dumb Stupid and Lummy Like This weren't, I thought they were okay. So I was like, all right, I got them back at baseline. Uh-huh. This is a trending upwards Ooh. now. Ooh. Ooh, bye, 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 I'm buying, I'm buying, investing in Nmix. You know what the, okay, you, okay, one more thing, you know how they're actually going up? I don't know how much on Reddit you guys were this weekend, but, like, r slash K-pop and r slash K-pop thoughts were, like, having this thing of, like, oh, like, I don't understand how they're selling so well, doesn't make sense. And then, like, they came out with, like, I think a million sales for this single album, I was like, okay, guys, like, I understand we want to point fingers here, but, like, (laughs) <laughs> now they're big chilling, you know. Like <laughs> you, you remember how we were like, well, they need to, it, it, like, we need them to do something big. It's a combination of this releases plus the sales have more or less established that they're, they're here to stay. They're here to stay, right? Yeah, mm-hmm. they're here to stay. Um. Okay, let's move on to Odd Eyed Circle Air Force One. They are now under Mod Mod House, formerly of Blackberry Creative. Last three songs: Sweet Crazy Love, Lunatic, and Girlfriend. That's like 2017 tracks. Oh, I like all of those wow. songs. Yeah. Back in the day, dude, Odd Eye Circle was Throwbacks. my favorite entity from Luna, like pre-release. I mean, pre-debut. Mm-hmm. Um, it's been a minute. Okay, well, we, this is it's, it's essentially a, a re-debut, right? Essentially. Essentially. Um, w- one thing that's kind of funny about this uh, this comeback is on certain channels they're having to change the name of the song because I saw what? that. Yeah, because yeah, Air, Air Force One obviously it's a Nike shoe, right? Um, Correct. Is that true? So they're having. I don't know, but certain. Um, I've TV seen channels are making them change the name of the song. One. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For for broadcast. Oh, okay. That that might be because the government they're worried that they that the government is gonna think it's product placement. That's yeah, not clearly known. Air Pulse yeah. One is what they're like on certain channels. Oh. But, um, <laughs> Sorry, what Air Pulse One? Yeah, 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 yeah. Sense, <laughs> Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um. Uh. Okay. okay. Number one. Happy that they're back. Happy that they've Yay. escaped Blackberry yeah. Creative. Um, I think that this song, it does capture some of the odd-eyed circle. I'm not going to call it weirdness because they weren't really weird, but some of the, the quirks that came along with the odd-eyed circle back in the day, okay. which I think are present. Okay. Um, but at the same time, 
the for me the decisive point is the da 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 chorus. Chorus. Are you are you okay with that or are you not? Is more or less going to be uh is going to imply your feelings about this song. Okay. I'm not the biggest fan of the da 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 Why are you not a biggest fan of the da 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 da? <laughs> um, you know, because the da 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 is um, the, I just feel like it kind of comes out of nowhere. Yeah, and I'm expecting a more like developed chorus. It's just, it's just kind of like a sound effect that happens, right? Right. Okay. Like on different effect. songs, uh-huh. when they get to the chorus and there's no actual lyrics, they just play the the weird music that that they're trying to replace the chorus with, right? Um, this song they they sing it, right? Mm-hmm. I just feel like the whole section sounds a little busy. It comes out of nowhere, mm. to be honest. There, there is a bit of a build up. There is a bit of like a bridge area that takes the tone down a little bit, and then you know it's like an explosive chorus. Um, it does follow a lot of the patterns that K-pop songs did in 2017 or 18, like Girls Front. It, it, arrangement wise, too. Mm. If if you Pay attention to what's going on in the background in the instrumental to the chorus be- below the da 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 that thing. Um, it's a lot of like future bassy synths, um, a lot of yep. glitchy arrangement that we see a lot mm-hmm. in the future bass inspired songs of 2016, 2017, um, or glitch by Quantum B is another one. Glitch core obviously is you know heavily inf- yeah. influenced by that. Um, so I'm hearing the kind of connection between this one. Um and the, the 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 girls front track less so with Lunatic but at the same time it's not like the Odd Eye Circle discography is like very expensive to the point where like I need to draw connections here. Um, on the other hand, the rest of the track is kind of like it's very different. It's very different. Um, yes, I agree. Right, girls front made a lot more sense because it felt like a cohesive, um, future based package, if you will. Um, and I'm not saying it needs to be one genre throughout the whole song. It's just the garage slash sorry sorry the drum and bass slash uh jersey sections of the track is a little bit it's a little bit far off in in my head um and they were so committed to the jersey sound to the point where i thought they were gonna do more of like a jersey kind of uh chorus but they were like nope we're just gonna do a k-pop chorus uh, for this one here um which was fine i it, it works. It works. But I don't think it was the most smoothest transition. And that's where you might mm-hmm. be like, ooh, you know, I'm not sure if I feel this. I didn't I didn't realize it until like an hour before the pop, but it is a, um, a G high track, right? Yeah. Mono tree. It was technically a mono tree track. Um, mm-hmm. I just felt like it It just sounded, it felt a little different to me. I don't know. Maybe it's, maybe it's because he's incorporating the current trend, which is the Jersey Club stuff, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Which I don't really... Like, I wouldn't associate that with when they were releasing the other things in 2017 because it wasn't that popular back then, right? So, no. mm. um, that's probably what's throwing me off a little bit. I don't know. Anita, how do you feel? Um, I kind of have similar feelings about the chorus. I think I like the energy that happened during that part in the song, but I, I felt like the repetition aspect of it felt like it almost made the song feel shorter like it's already quite short but it almost felt that like i kind of wish you could have had a little bit more in the chorus to develop maybe that melody but not in that way um yeah i feel like there was a lot of elements that i thought were they were interesting in the in the form that they were combined and i feel like okay this is kind of interesting this is not what i would associate like coupled together but i feel like it, it could have been more I don't know, like blend it together a little bit better when it came to the chorus. Because I, I do agree. I feel like it does come a little jarring at times um, when you hear it. Um, but visually, I thought it was really cool. Ooh. I like the outfits, the styling, the eye patch. Um, That's like a the- da- Daryl mm. Hannah from Kill Bill outfit. Mm. Mm. You've ever seen Kill Bill? It's a very similar outfit. She wears like a black suit yeah. with an eye patch. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah, I liked a lot of the styling choices. Um, and I mean, I do agree that there's like a certain essence that I feel like, okay, this feels very similar to what I expected of the unit. Like this is, this feels somewhat familiar, but the combination of elements in the song itself felt a little 
Like, it could have been a little more. And I, I, to be honest, I, I'm not necessarily thinking like, oh, this is a bad, a bad song to to like re debut this group with. I feel like it just feels like okay, so maybe this is kind of like what we're gonna be looking forward to, like something similar, but also trying a different route a little bit here and there, um, which makes sense. I feel like given the opportunity, they will try something a little different. Yeah, the lyrics had a lot of like, uh, like references to new things right like we're on doing mm. things, things like that a lot of the visuals it's a lot of that uh that Jaden jung cinematography magic in terms of <laughs> the like the shots they chose right there's the yeah. moon there's like a there's one of the scenes i thought was most impactful when they're burning the 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 white converse which yeah. i really associate with like high high you yeah. know from the, the older stuff keegan was also in this right yes, he got shot. knighted randomly oh. towards mm. the was end. Her? i wasn't sure if she was like a spectator in the like behind them i just oh, yeah, no, the shot right, and she right, was there right, yeah. there was a yeah. nighting that happened and hejin's there yeah yeah i don't know what the connection is more lore i don't know <laughs> maybe they're gonna drag her into auto hey, they're they're putting together artemis that's what it is mm-hmm. yeah. I, I do think it's trying to do a bunch of things right it's regardless of whether you like the song or not it's definitely starting off with what luna is was it was because mm. it yes it definitely has girls front Yes, it also has, I feel like the melodies, especially in the verses and the bridge and whatnot, feel very s- Butterfly-esque. Remember Butterfly? Huh? Second oh. Luna's track. Um, uh-huh, uh-huh. I'm that kind, it felt like a, between those two, it felt like a ma- ma- like a mature version of Odd Eye Circle that we ran into six years ago. Um, which makes sense. They debuted six, seven years ago at this point. They're not rookies anymore. Even though wow. Luna had an interesting run of a discography. Um, so this feels definitely feels like a solid transition in terms of um, bridging the gap between where Luna left off of and what Artemis is going to be. Is Odd Eye Circle going to be like a recurring thing? I have no idea. But it does provide like um, a window, I guess, into like what Artemis is going to be like. And I, mm. to be honest, I, I feel like I, I'm kind of, I'm kind of, I'm kind of, I'm kind of digging it. I'm kind of digging it. I'm kind of seeing a big enough difference between this one um their their kind of style versus shoot triple s um where i'm like okay Uh, yeah yeah maybe maybe he can actually produce both while maintaining like a good difference between the two you know what i mean like i think for me my hang up is i'm just kind of sick of this jersey club thing that we're all doing these days (laughs) oh buddy it's a little much now we're just started we're just we're getting just, started. I know we're just starting, but this was not my favorite application of it. That's what I'll say. Yeah, that's fair. Mm. That's the that's the better way for me to. Play. I think I have a very um, good point. Um, also, one more thing: the mixing is kind of shot. I don't know why hap- what happened there. Uh, the bridge. I understand they put a f- phaser on it because they wanted to, but something about the mix sounds off. Um, they're they're good singers. They don't need this much effects on their stupid thing <laughs> oh you're talking about like in that one part where they kind of sounded like she's on the radio or something right uh where they're showing like pictures of the moon and things right yeah they they have I a, think they were going they were going for like a space sounding voice i don't know how to describe it <laughs> they had a they yeah. had a filter they had a phaser yeah. then they had like a high pass no it was i'm like okay come on um i understand i understand it's a stylization thing but like it's it's a little bit too much to put it on the whole verse there um as well say Okay, I'm more excited for the event than the song. You know, that's the best way for me to describe it on a personal mm. level. I'm excited that they're back. I'm excited to see what they're going to do. This already sold in like five days, 50,000 albums, which is about, which is going to end up more than any of the Triple S stuff has done so far. Oh my God. That's also mm. pretty cool there. Um, Makes sense though, yeah. Yeah, so this this is good. Good. I like that. All right, let's move on to the, the next thing. We have Jungkook's solo debut with uh, it's Seven featuring Lado. He is from Big Hit. His last three solo tracks technically not debuts, but he sang Dreamers uh, for the World Cup, Left and Right with Charlie Puth, and then Stay Alive is another track that he did, which was for the, mm-hmm. the Manhua, I believe, right? Yes, ah, I think that was the OST okay, okay. for the Manhua. But this is his solo debut right here. I would say out of all of the BTS solo tracks we've gotten in the past like nine months or so, um, mm. this is the most k pop sounding. This is the way I'll put it. And I'll also say, I think this is my favorite out of all the ones we've had. Ooh, maybe the, maybe ooh. this or one of the RM ones that I liked. I remember really liking some of the RM stuff as well. Uh-huh. This one might be like top two, top three for me. 
Oh. Interesting. I like this track. I think the chorus is catchy. It it kind of works. And like when when he does like this is the good application of sing rapping. Like I think other groups do sing rapping and it's just kind of there and it's kind of not good. But the way he sing raps some of his sections just kind of works for me. Mm. Mm. Okay. Mm -hmm. I I do think vocally speaking, Jungkook is probably the strongest vocal member of BTS in general. And that's this is where it kind of shines. Um, mm-hmm. the overall arrangement is pretty minimal. There's not too much going on. There's like a UK Garage kind of drum machine going around. And there's, at certain points, there's a guitar. At a certain points, there's like these um, saw synths. At a certain point, there's keyboards. Mm-hmm. Um, and all, it sounds pretty minimal. They're all playing the same chord, just, you know, they're replacing each other, whether it depends, whether it's a verse or, you know, a chorus section. Um, and you need to be a really strong vocalist to kind of pull that off, especially by yourself here. Uh, and that, that's where I really feel like it kind of shines out. Um, until you get to Lotto, who is the rapper, rapper uh, featuring rap section near the end. Um, it, was, it was all right. I'm not sure if he needed that or if he needed... Mm. I lost my train of thought. Um <laughs> <laughs> That scene was my favorite scene in the entire music video, though. The, the, funeral, the funeral scene. Oh, dude. He's that kind was, of there. I thought it was and then nice she does the rapping, of humor. <laughs> and then he, he wakes up. He's like, dude, I even died to make you come see me. You know? With Han So-Hee, wow. right? <laughs> and then he gets uh, out of the grave, like, smiling. And then she's, like, super <laughs> annoyed. I, like, she's, like, <laughs> she's like, you mother... <laughs> you... Dude, I started <laughs> laughing, like, literally. <laughs> that was... No, that was such a good scene. Uh, there's something nice. about this, like... Jungkook's acting in this, which is so, like, nonchalant and good. Mm. I don't know how, like, the acting felt so natural. It was so playful. I it was great. It was good. And obviously, like, the storyline I got was, like, I you find me hella annoying, but you still like me. You know what I mean? Like, you're just going to have to deal. Um, mm. which I, I like that theming overall. I thought it was great. I like the scenes that they did. The, the laundry mat getting flooded was kind of crazy. Mm. And um, then they were near the top in the ceiling. I was like, boy. That's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like the days of the week chorus was a bit mm-hmm. of a bold move because it oh, could yeah. have been terrible, right? But it just sort of works some way. Okay. Um Doug. Try to do it again? No, 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 no. Uh, do you did you know that there's like a clean version and an explicit version to this track? There is? Y'all didn't know. Wait, okay. In this the makes, course? This makes way more sense about all the memes I've been seeing about this song. God damn wait, it. Wait, what? I was like, bro, why aren't you mentioning this? I thought you would. In the course? Yes, okay, Anita. No, there's I, a clean I, version I, of the song and an explicit version of the song. Oh Look it up God. on I've Spotify. I've also seen the clean one. <laughs> one of the major differences is that um, yeah. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, I'll be loving you right Seven days a week on the clean version. Uh, Lovin is replaced by Intercourse on the uh, explicit version. So, um, he he's got stamina. That's what oh. I'll say. Yeah, dude, all seven days of the week, he's got stamina. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, I feel like some of the the wording is is kind of implied, maybe, but I didn't know that there was two different versions. Man, y'all need the to uh, at least. step up your uh, streaming game, I guess. Um, it, no, here's the thing: the the message is obviously a lot more clear in the in the uh, verse from guest verse from Lotto. Um, right. Yeah. yeah. Um, the rest of Jungkook's parts is a lot more is clearly, uh, you know, no talking about it in the uh, explicit version. I don't know. That was, was kind of funny. Um, and I understand why mm. he did it. It's K-pop. It's not really a adult only genre, you know. True. Yeah, I'm. I'm assuming well, a lot of his fans are. Some are overage. Some are probably not. So you know. Mm. Well, I did find the. The I mean, track no, itself, I was, right? I was, I was really just talking about the storyline in terms of the the thing on the screen. Like, it ain't, it ain't like he's gonna get explicit on the screen. Oh, you know. Well, no. Well, you were talking about the chorus, so. Yeah, I still think that the no. I'm still saying the Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Sunday thing just works. You know? uh, no, I still think it works. So, uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. 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 I think in either context, on the clean version or the explicit version, it just like it was smart the way they did it. It could have been bad, I think. Sure. Yeah, mm. uh, yeah. I was gonna say that. I th- <laughs> no, 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 I'm, I, I'm, I'm gonna bring it back. I was gonna say I thought it was an interesting choice, um, 
for his solo debut and for this song in general to do an all English track, right? And the feature as well. And I don't know, just kind of the structure it felt very Western media friendly in a way, mm. um, which I thought was interesting. And I feel like I kind of understand it because I feel like his, the style, the, the, the delivery, the vocal delivery that he had for this song in particular felt um, like it suited that in a way. Um, I don't know. It just feels like it wasn't meant to be super um, typical structure K-pop, I would say. I think this is veering more as a like a more solo pop, if you know what I mean. No, hundred um, percent. And and I think a part of that is the English lyric itself. Like regardless of which version you're, li- you're listening to, it works really mm. well. Like we didn't have a like a IU disaster again. You know what I mean? Like we didn't have a section where oh. we're like, oh, like what's going on? What are they saying? You know what I mean? Like it's, <laughs> I'm, I yeah, I don't know, Doug. Did you actually understand what's what he's saying? Oh yeah, yeah. Honestly. It took about two listens, and I was like, "Wait, this is all in English, isn't it?" And it was, I know. you know, yeah. Which is, oh. which is, yeah. I don't like go into the songs, and the first thing I think is this in English or Korean. I just mm. listen to the song first, what it is, mm-hmm. uh, which means he's doing a good job. Um, there you go, he's a good job. I I looked up all the BTS releases in the past like twelve months or so. This is one or two. For me, sure. Just one this, and two. then the RM track. Which one is it called? The Wildflower. Those are my two favorites. Mm. Mm. I think, because here's the thing. With this Jungkook track, he he's like, all right, I'll just do Jungkook K-pop right now. K-pop track, basically, or like, a, it's like a Jungkook pop track, but it has a lot of the K-pop right. elements still in it, which I can recognize. And Peppered in there, yes. Mm. I just think it works. You know, there's, there's nothing yeah. bad about this. I literally don't have any big problems with this track at all, which is kind of rare. Okay. Oh, wow. Also, I saw, I was looking... Before I actually saw the music video, I saw like a, a, sh- a TikTok, I want to say, of the choreo. And then I found out like, he actually performed it live in Good Morning America, say, one of those stages that they had. Yes, yep. Um, Very nice. I thought the, the vocals were stable. Choreography was nice. I liked how, I don't know, the performance felt very, very smooth, very relaxed. Um. I don't know. I feel like that's kind of the energy he has as a soloist, which is, which makes sense because I I have heard a little bit of his solo stuff, um, but I don't know. Pleasantly surprised that it turned out like this. I think it works for him. Same. I I kind of agree with Doug. I would say this is one of my. I I think I actually lean a little more towards RM, but other than that, this is this mm. is really solid. This is really good stuff. Solid pop music. Um. Yeah, I, I don't know. I think this leans a little more pop. Maybe it's the English and the lotto, but um, regardless. Funny things. Um, Jungkook was on my local news channel on the six o'clock news. <laughs> they were like, mm. "I'll give an I'll give a um an invitation." They go, "K-pop artist Jungkook is perform- performed today at at Central Park." So basically, Jungkook was performing at Central Park. He performed one song, then it started to torrentially downpour, oh, no. so they canceled oh, it. No. And apparently, the girl who was first in line—I think this was on a Friday—was there since Monday. What? Oh no! Yeah, oh, so she waited God. like five days. So that happened. Yeah. Oh. And that's they nice. interviewed another girl, and this one girl who's an army, and she brought her friend who's a new army, and she was like, "This is her first time doing army things and lining up." And I was like, "Boy, she lined up all this time, and you saw one song." <laughs> Oh, that's and so then, like, yeah. so that happened. Um, the other thing, this is funny because I don't have Spotify anymore, right? Mm. Yeah, and I like don't, don't listen. I don't have Spotify. I canceled it. Like, I don't. Oh wow. Yeah, I don't really need it. Um, what do you use? Just listen to music on YouTube on a playlist, which that's is true. why this explicit, non-explicit is a. I, I have didn't a funny realize story. I have a funny story back <laughs> in the day. I have a funny story in the back. We in the are day. a music podcasting crew, and y'all don't. Okay, whatever. <laughs> You gotta tell me when there's an explicit version. I remember one time, uh, back in the day when WAP came out, right? Oh, I, I okay. knew what the t- I knew what the title meant, right? Yeah. But the official okay. music video, they never used the explicit version. Did it? I so don't remember. I, no, they don't. They use like wet and gushy or something in the in the in the music video, right? Okay. So I was like, when are they gonna say the word? 
for like a week straight. <laughs> it was Warren, waiting. Like, I remember Ward told me like, bro, it's in the explicit version. And I was like, I felt so dumb, but it happened again, you know? So <laughs> whenever there's an explicit version, Ward, you got to tell me or else I'm not going to know. Well, that's, that's the, I'll know, be honest. I think loving you right works a little better than wet and gushy. Um, I mean, based on the <laughs> based on the girl's rap section, I knew, all right, clearly this is, this, she's, she's applying many things here. You know, well, <laughs> whenever there's an R rated version, I will let you know. You gotta let me know. I will let yeah. you know so we can listen in without our moms peeping about. <laughs> I don't know. Um, oh, yeah, that's a good thing because, like, my family watches the music I know. Videos <laughs> together. So we're kind of lucky. And it makes so that. All right, I'm gonna take this as a, a, as a, as a it's minor a L. It's a little a, bit of a W there. No, no, this is a bit of a win. You, d- you were about to watch a song about. We avoided the situation when you're watching a movie on like HBO at your house, and then something happens on the screen. Oh god, that's very to awkward. Once, in the room. It was not great. Yeah, yeah. Oh we avoided no, that. we avoided that. Um, okay, so I listen to the radio version, is what I'm gonna call it. <laughs> 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 um, let's let's move to the last song. Uh, and it also this makes way more sense now because I've been seeing all these memes about the lyrics, and I was like, eh. oh. But now they make way more sense. I posted a meme. I saw like a Venn diagram. It's like effing you literally, effing you figuratively. (laughs) And they put like all the BTS kids are not enough data. I saw something like that. So now this makes so much more sense to me. Um, Hey, you know, he's got the stamina for all seven days of the week. Go, Junk. Hey, let's go. (laughs) Let's go. Yeah, he better get that in before he has to go to the military. All I'm saying. (laughs) What? (laughs) What? Okay, okay. Before we move on. I like the song. I hope this becomes an album. It's just wait. This is one oh, song. Oh, for sure. Yeah. What? Yeah. A, yeah. Come on. Give me. Give me. Give me more. Give me more, please. For me, nice. as someone who hasn't been a fan of all of the solos, I found this extremely compelling. I hope they do more. Of this. Same. Mm. same. 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 All right. Uh, next one. We got NCT Dream with ISTJ. Yep. Uh, they are from SM Entertainment. Their last songs were Broken Melodies, Candy, and Beatbox. So. Similar to the Nmix Nmix track, we covered Broken Melodies, which was the pre-release for this one. Mm-hmm. Yep. I'm going to say that I think Broken Melodies is like a magnitude better than this one. Ooh. 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 I don't know. Man, you are agree. spicy today. Yeah. I mean, I'm just saying how it is. You know, I don't really care. I mean, yeah, way. personal opinion. Yeah, yeah. I'm a, I'm a, I'm entitled to think what I want. You know? Yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. Um. <laughs> I think similarly to the Nmix track, my my problem with this one was that a lot of the sections I liked, right? Yeah. A lot of the sections by themselves, the, 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 we got like an aggressive section, we got a, a singing section all of a sudden, we got like an SM chorus singing section, you know, where they layer the vocals. All of those mm. things are great, right? You mm-hmm. know, NCT, the kids are clearly good. We know this already. But I just feel like this was more mix pop than like Edmix has done in a while. Right? <laughs> oh. Do you know what I'm saying? Right? They and took I away from that yes. pop era. Yeah, they just kind of shoved all of the things, the components together, and they're like, well, this is the track, guys. Enjoy. And I just feel like at certain points, it just got a little out there. Okay. You know, I think most parts are excusable until you hit the final bridge after the second chorus where it goes oh, R&B yeah, yeah, yeah. all of a sudden. Like the R&B in the, in the Rose Garden, right? Yeah, no. Just happened. You don't like it. It's a I good. Like, it's a good section. It's a good section. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I was confused as like, oh, is this the B side? Like, what's going on here? Like, this was. <laughs> this uh. what I thought. I was listening to the album and I was like, oh, I thought Broken Melodies comes after this on the album, and I was like, oh wait, it's still the same song. Like, what's going on here? Like, I see. Yeah. Um, I feel like the rest of the song works. It still works. It's not. Yeah, I don't know, Doug. I, I feel like it worked until you got to the final section. Maybe. Okay. The one other thing that was bugging me was like, I feel like they need a like a seizure warning on this music video. <laughs> There's like certain scenes when they're like pointing the camera. Like, I don't remember which one, but I think it was like upwards and the ceiling's just like flashing all these colors randomly. I don't mm. know. I just felt a l- little concerned. Yeah, yeah, in, in in the chorus, like like a minute in, the ceiling is just flashing the whole time. Mm. I don't know. That's true. Um, it's a very uh, colorful video. And then how do you feel about this? You're a big NCT Dream person, right? Uh, yeah, yeah. No, I feel like with this release, it's very different than Broken Melodies. Um, 
And I do agree that they kind of did a lot of different things at once. A lot of sections don't necessarily sound the same, right? Um, but I, I, I don't know. Maybe it's it's the way things were done where I didn't think it was like super jarring. Um, even in the R&B section, I felt like I almost like there was a part of me that was expecting it to end a little soon. And then I thought, like, okay, yeah, the, what is this? Why, why is this here? Like, why is so why short? Why are like, still going? But but it still but it kind of like stayed there for a while and kind of developed quite a bit. And I thought, like, okay, this is kind of interesting because it doesn't feel it doesn't feel like it's trying to be shock factor. It feels like it's trying to to create a narrative in the song as well. Um, and I don't know. I guess I also liked I liked the sound that they had in that part as well. Um, it reminded me very much of the Silk Sonic sound for people that are familiar with it, Bruno Mars, mm. Anderson Pac. Um, and I feel like that I like that. I like that sound. Um, it could have blended back a little better, but I didn't mind it too much. I thought like it was going to be super jarring, but not. Maybe I'm I'm getting used to to it since oh, a lot no. of artists have tried it out. Oh no, Anita! But. I don't know. I didn't. I didn't mind it as much. I also feel like the layered vocals and the chorus. I really like that. And so, uh, who was it? Somebody was saying like, "I, wh- I know why you like that part." And I said like, "Why? Because it's very shiny, shiny yes, as I've a heard, group." I saw a couple of reviews talking about this. Right. Same thing. Oh. Yeah. As a group, they usually have a like, very layered vocals in the chorus. Um, and there's a certain part in in this one where they. They, they do that, and I feel like, oh, this is very nice. Um, I don't know. I feel like it was an interesting mix of being both very, like, melodic, right, with the vocals. Um, vocal line was really, really good in this one, I think, but also being, like, very, like, intense, like, hip-hop. Like, it feels fast. The mm. song feels fast for some reason, but um, but then they kind of, like, interplay, like, go back and forth between, like, very, very, like, vocal focused and then going back to like the sing rap or or just pure rap sections um which i thought was interesting um and i guess maybe i i wasn't like a super huge fan of broken melodies i think it's a very good song very very good lyrics um but i feel like this felt a little bit more interesting overall um so far from the releases yeah i well, I disagree. I like the other one better. Okay. Mm. <laughs> I know you really like broken melodies. I like broken melodies. It's I like broken thing. melodies. Yeah. yeah. Mm. To the point where I started saying broken dreams for some reason. I don't know. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, you do. You were doing that apparently, and we just let you. I just I was I was doing that for weeks, and I was doing that yeah, with like yeah. my friends. I was like, oh, have you checked out Broken Dreams by NTT Dream? And they were like, what? <laughs> um, no, I agree with you. The song feels very rushed. Um, the tempo oh, feels rushed. very fast. Okay. <laughs> yeah, the tempo feels very pa- fast. Transitions mm-hmm. are basically non-existent. The song ends on an abrupt note. Um, everything feels very abrupt. Um, the transitions, uh, the, 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 I don't know, the build-up. And this is where I feel like, okay, they were kind of pulling out all their tricks in their boxes to make it three minutes. Um... Which I understand again is a business decision. Was it fully executed? I don't think so. Um, but you know, it it is what it is. It is what we have. Uh, the the layered vocals and the glamorous, dangerous yes. part is amazing, though. You know, I really like that part. That's great. Mm. That's that's hitting the the shovel in you, Anita, for sure. It was. <laughs> I almost yeah. felt like. No, I shouldn't say this, but <laughs> there was a, a a moment where I felt like. Why didn't Shiny get this? I think it's interesting to see like h- how much hear, that I can hear Key singing this right there. Right? Like, the I, I like heard key. it as well. <laughs> it sounds like Key, it does. Yo. But I mean it's it's interesting to hear like different interpretations of that kind of structure. Because I feel like a lot of SM artists have done it. I don't think it's only Shiny that does it. Um but I, I feel like I do hear it the most in them. Um <laughs> I don't know. So, I feel like you're probably gonna fight with the NCTs over here. I mean, I'm, I'm not. <laughs> I'm under. I'm under the opinion that in the like the last like 18 months, a lot of the tracks, it's not like everyone calls. Oh, it sounds like NCT. No, it just sounds like what SM is doing these days. 
right? Yeah, it's more company based. Like, that, that's, now. like even some of the Boa tracks were doing things that people were saying, "Oh, it sounds like an NCT track," right? But mm. it's kind of just what SM is doing. Same with Espo um, as well. Yeah, they've. I don't yeah. know. I, I understand they have like a song camp system and like they have like a whole back database of like all these demo songs. I would appreciate it if they can kind of you know venture out a little more because they did that with Broken Melodies, which is a good song. It worked. So, mm-hmm. no, I'll tell you. Mm-hmm. Um, one more thing. You guys like the lyrics for this song, ISTJ? Very I interesting. thought that, it was like, fun, they, I guess. they mentioned this, the, you know, the personality test, right? ISTJ, which apparently MBTI. is, is the, the NBA MBTI stuff. I am apparently an ISTJ. Um, oh, it's, about that. it's about you. <laughs> Dude, NCT is flirting with you, dog. <laughs> all i'll say is i listened to the song and i had the the subtitles on right yeah mm-hmm. other than like like you know the guy had istj on his um teeth jewelry thing oh, that they're doing these yeah. days which i think is the ridiculous grill. that they're doing <laughs> like e- uh, the, the 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 rapper she has like cherries on her teeth yeah. now yeah, yeah, yeah. it's her oh, wow. dude it's more ice that. in your mouth why you why are you complaining like everyone wants more ice <laughs> All I know is they said hot like soup in these lyrics at some point. Did, I was yeah. laughing. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't know. I don't think the lyrics had too much to do with personality tests or being an introvert or That's, anything. I guess, yeah, I guess it was subtly mentioned, not totally about that. Yeah. Oh, it was, yeah, it was kind of cute. It was, I mean, obviously the MBTI personality test is kind of like trending these days. It's like, it's like, oh, you know, really? I don't know. People Koreans are, are like, were a little bit late to the party. But they've taken it as their own, is the way I'll put it. Oh. Yeah. We used to be obsessed with, uh, what's it called? The blood type blood tests? Types? Back, yeah, yeah, back yeah, in the day. Yeah. I was like, ooh, you're an A type. So, you know, you care what other people think. And you're, oh, a B you're, a, type. you're an A, B, Run. so you're a crazy person. Ooh, look right? at you, <laughs> wild AP <AP-man>. man. Um, yeah. <laughs> MBTS is a little better than that, so I'm not complaining. It's taken over this for sure, though. Um, yeah. Uh, it's it's kind of cute. It's nice. It kind of works mm. here and there. Um, they they do reference it throughout the entire track. So they do. They do. Yeah. Of all those songs in the recent couple months that have had this kind of like central theme to it, I feel like this mm-hmm. works a little better. It's not over the top. It's not mm, yeah. under the top. I guess it's the right amount. Is what I'm saying. It's not cheesy. It's not cringy. It's not campy. At the mm-hmm. same time, it's it's effective. You know, they're talking about it. You know, it's clear that, you know, what, what they're trying to do is... It's in the music video, too. It's in the song lyrics, too. I'm trying to say mm-hmm. I really appreciate it, is what I'm saying, you know what I mean? But yeah. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Other big releases this week. Pokemon and Hypen released one and only. Oh, boy. So you can watch that if you like ah. Pokemon. Sandra Park released her solo debut festival, which is, like, basically a remake of the Um Jung Wah song. Yep. Back in the day, oh, Jordan so uh, released okay, okay. This Love featuring Paul Blanco. So that happened. Yo, shout out to my boy Mo. <laughs> I've released I Want, which is a Pepsi track. And then G Idol released I Do via 88 Rising because I believe Cube, G Idol, and 88 Rising are now in cahoots together. Signed an agreement. Really? Wow. Interesting. Yes. So that is pretty cool there. That's cool. Um, Spice King. Last week when I was not here, New Jean Super Shy got first place. End Mix Roller Coaster got second. Kiss of Life shh, and Zero Base One came in third in a tie. New candidates this mm-hmm. week are the four songs we covered: uh, End Mix Party O'Clock, Odd Eyed Circle, Air Force One, BTS Jungkook Seventeen featuring Lotto, and NCT Dream ISTJ. Okay, my chart is Super Shy first. Correct. Super Shy. Second place. Jungkook seven. Oh, okay. And then third place. This is gonna be a game time decision. I'm gonna give it to Roller Coaster. Ooh. Oh. Oh. Okay. That's my chart. Hmm. I need to go. Okay. I'll go. Go go go. I'll start at the top because I feel like my top two are easy. It's the third spot. That's a problem. First, first place, I'm still giving it to New Jeans. Super shy. It's so catchy. And the live stage just started rolling out. The choreog- choreography is great. Um, second place, I feel like this didn't quite um, grab the attention as much as I thought it would. But the TXT Jonas Brothers collaboration. Whoa, Anita. Do it like Whoa. that. 
I really like that song. Yeah. I thought it it was really funky, really nice. Surprise. Um, very replayable too. So it's in second spot for me. Ah, no, third place. I I'm also making a game time decision. Jungu because I've been I've been like switching three songs from third place. Um, so I guess honorable mentions are. And mix Party O'Clock and NCT Dream, ISTJ. I think both of them were really, really nice. Um, but there were certain parts that could have been done a little better. So, I, yeah, it's Jungkook in third uh, with seven featuring Lotto. Um, I, I wish it was a full album. I feel like there could be I a agree. lot of interesting stuff Same. coming out from him as a soloist. So looking forward to it in the future. I agree. I want more. That's second on my list today. Good song. Second, okay. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I really like all these songs this week. It's pretty good. It's I a, think pretty good bad. I know. Like, Not bad. This is a solid week if you think about it. Like, don't have, yeah. Yeah. Like, these are, these are all like... These past couple of weeks, everything's been pretty good. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. I, I would dance to this. Like, the I remember the... Most recent song I didn't like is Marshmallow. And that was, it's been a minute. <laughs> yeah. I didn't have to mention that. I'm sorry. Um, okay. Hey, the, 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 the title track's better. Is it? I haven't checked it I out. I agree. I haven't checked it out. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Um, okay. Well, the rest of my chart, I'll go over it real quick. It's really simple because um, it's first place MX, third place MX. Uh, Roller Coaster on third. Uh, first. What? Party O'Clock on third. <laughs> Um, wait, what? Whoa, wait, whoa, wait, wait, say this, wait, say this again. Say this again. Roller coaster is number one. Seven wow. is number two. Party o'clock is number three. Um, wow, so you got no new jeans. Super shy would be my fourth. Oh my god, wow. dude. Um, what the f? This is messed up he, all my calculations. You felt that it was too short. Yeah, it's. I still feel like it's rushed. I'm listening to it. I'm listening. Hey, to man, it. you hear that all the time on the dating apps too, my guy. Episode, super shy, hey, dude. <laughs> Everyone's talking about Sorry. new jeans on Hinge. Like, I'm not kidding. <laughs> That's a conversation starter. It's like, it's like oh, new first, jeans? first round is on me. If you have new jeans in your playlist, like that's a legit prompt wow. I read. <laughs> Anyways, um, roller coaster <laughs> is number one. I think it's banging summer bang over the year. Um, oh. Party O'Clock <laughs> is a solid follow up. <laughs> Doesn't feel like the title track. Um, over the pre-release of Roller Coaster because Roller Coaster was so, still so good. good song though. Yeah, Super mm. Shy is still good. I still like it. I'm listening to it a lot in conjunction to New Jeans, um, like those ah, two together. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm. um, just alone by itself. I don't know. Just yeah. All right, go to Gang Gang Gang. Um, first place, they had New Jeans Super Shy 41 points. Let's go. Let's go. I'm going to do the honorable mention. Fourth place, Odd Eyed Circle was 19. Oh, oh, wow. I thought, okay. Pretty close. Yeah. Third mm-hmm. place was Jungkook, uh, 7 with 22. And in second place, they had Kiss of Life shh, with 25. Mm. Oh. Wow, okay. That's a bit of a surprise. As a result, uh, third place, Enmix Roller Coaster with 6 points. Second place is Jungkook 7 with 8. And in first place, missing out on uh, Hollow Spice because of Warren didn't vote for it, was... New Jean ah. Super Shy with 15. That might be the first time we had a 15 with, like, like the score 15 came out via three votes. Where three people had it first and someone just didn't have it. That might be the first time this has happened. <laughs> well, um, you know, uh, they're the first for everything, right? <laughs> in other news, uh, show winners, Anita, hit us with them. Yeah, we got a couple of them. First off, G Idol with Queen Card. They won a music Still bank. Winning. They have a total of 13 wins. Damn. With this one. Oh, wow. Um, then we have Shiny with Hard. Um, they won on Show Champion. So this was their fifth win so far. Congrats to them. We have In young Woon with Grain of Sand. He won on Show Music Core. So three wins for him. Then we have New Jeans Super Shy. First win on M Countdown. Then the Seraphim with Eve, Psyche, and the Bluebeard's Wife. First win on Inkigayo. Should have been the title track. Just saying. We're, um, in- we're still going. Th- <laughs> we're still going. All right, uh, this ends part one. So you talk episode 244. We'll be back after a short break. Three, two, one. Hello, Sergeant. 
Talk Nation, this is Anita here with a quick PSA. If you would like to support Soju Talk K-pop podcast, please like, subscribe, or follow us on whatever platform you're using. And consider joining our Patreon at patreon.com slash sojutalk or donating to us at paypal.me slash sojutalk. On behalf of the crew and myself, thank you. Now back to our regularly scheduled episode. All right, we are back at it with part two of Soju Talk episode 244. Let's talk about some news and events from the past week. First one, YG Entertainment aiming for a September debut of Baby Monster. So it is not confirmed that it is uh, going to be in September, but Mm. it's probably going to be around there, which is great, right? Whenever YG releases a new group, it's obviously a very big deal. Right. Um, Mm -hmm. Additionally, during the pod, we found out that Somi is going to have her comeback in August. Oh, oh, my God. Wow. It's happening. We're getting our like biannual Somi crumb. Right, guys? They're feeding (laughs) us a little like (laughs) one little speck. Oh, man. This this rain and the drought. Yeah, Um, we're getting our like our Somi Um, for the first time since like 2021 October. Something like that. Yeah, I know. That's, that's wow, long, that's that long. long? Yeah. Yeah, it's almost been two full years since we, we've gotten into I mean, you know what? If YG is releasing two things for, like, August, then September... Like, dude, that's like... They're overworking themselves. Are they okay? They're overworking. Um, is so, this so that's the good. That's the good. <laughs> yeah, okay. So there's a... People are reporting. Uh, YG Entertainment refutes rumors regarding Blackpink's Lisa's decision to renew her contract, uh, affecting changes in her schedule. So... There, it's like, it appears, like, sources are saying, it says in this thing of that one, it says Chinese sources, right? Yeah. They're saying, mm-hmm. they shared previously that Lisa and YG are having hard time coming to agreement regarding her extension. We also mm-hmm. heard a couple years ago that other countries were trying to buy her, like, contract to get her to come to their countries for Ooh. obscene amounts of money, I had heard. Interesting. Like, people were throwing out, like, someone was offering $200 million for her to sign with them. Oh, my God. Yeah. So... This is more just like a symptom of that where everything that happens with Lisa, people are saying like it has to do with the contract, doesn't it? Right. So, yeah. I don't know. Um, do, do you guys mm. want Lisa to leave or stay at YG? Do you guys have an opinion? here? It's it's tough mm. because. Why her at YG has been extremely successful, whether you oh, like yeah. the amount of music Blackpink has released or not. They are so successful. It's, it's ridiculous. Right. Mm-hmm. Um. Right. People are arguing that if she's like at her own company or a company in a, uh, a different country, that she'll release more music, be more present, and make even more mm-hmm. money. I don't know. It's a hard sell to me. Yeah, I, I'm not convinced either way. I, I totally mm-hmm. agree with you. Like, I I want to see Blackpink as the four members they are right now. I'm not done with that, even though I'm like sometimes mm-hmm. frustrated with their music. I like what they're going with right now. On the other hand, like. In a parallel universe, in a world where Lisa has different producers, like that, I cannot erase from my head. There's a yeah. mo- possibilities. <laughs> there's a there's a parallel multiverse universe out there where like Model Tree is producing for Lisa, or like I don't know, like mm-hmm. there's a different universe joints. where Lisa's releasing her Ooh, fifth damn. single, or like not fifth single, fifth album, and she has a second English album on the way too. And she's appearing at the Grammys, right? Yo, like, and, there's a there's a world where that is true. And everyone's like, "Have you heard Blackpink Lisa's like mixtape, fourth mixtape with Lil Wayne?" Like, I'm sure that exists somewhere yeah. out there. <laughs> yeah, so uh, it's it's tough. Um, we'll have to see what happens there. All right, we got SM news. So they shared that Super Junior renewed their contracts with the agency, but members Kyuhyun, Unhyuk, Donghae will be continuing their participation with Super Junior while working on a- individual activities separate from SM. So essentially, all mm. members have re-signed with SM on a Super Junior musical sense. I see. But other members, Kyuhyun, Unhyuk, and Donghae, mm. are going to be doing their non-Super Junior music things, not at SM. Interesting. Okay. I see. Okay. That's kind of what's going on here. Mm. Sort of like the situation where Mamamoo, some of the kids are in different mm-hmm. um, companies, but then when they do Mamamoo, they could do it together. 
That's what right. people are, are seeing this as. So that's pretty yep. interesting in its own right. Um, Huyhan is in discussions with Antenna for individual activities. Ooh. Ooh. That's pretty makes cool. Sense. That makes a lot that of sense. sense. to me. Yeah. Mm. And then Unhyuk and Donghae are setting up their own agency. So D&E is going to set up their own thing. Okay. Mm. I'm not so, super sure about d e but Kyuhyun makes a lot of sense, right? He's very active on variety. If you look at his music, right. it's very ballad-focused, which... Very much in line with Antenna. Exactly. Like, production. yeah. No, like a Jung Seung-won collab with Kyuhyun? Dude, that would mm. be great. Mm-hmm. That is that one. Um, additionally, Anita, SM's mm-hmm. new seven-member boy group, which includes Song Chan, Shotaro, Unsuk and Sung Han will be making their debut in September. The group Ooh. is currently filming their debut music video in LA. So this is the non NCT thing that's debuting, right? Right. This is the new boy yes. group, the seven member boy group. It's gonna be happening in September. We have confirmation on that. This is a big deal. You remember we were it talking is. about generations and like maybe when they all start to release new boy groups, it's gonna signal something. It's starting to happen. Here we y'all. go. Is it gonna go. happen now? Mm-hmm. Yeah. We'll have to see what that looks like. The article's um, calling it fifth gen. Here's some more SM Kakao updates. Mm. So this has been happening. So Kim Min Jong, who's a very famous actor in Korea, he's all like a, one of Lee Suman's biggest defenders. He's been at the company for over a decade. He left. Uh, Shin Dong Yap, mm. which is one of the biggest uh, MCs in Korea, mm. he he left SMCNC. And then we had the Super Junior stuff. And then the FCC uh, found violations in Kakao's takeover of SM. So I have more information oh. on that. Oh, boy. No, <laughs> no. Yeah, so let me, let, me, let me go to that one. I believe I have it next. Just for context, uh, Kim Min Jong, he's not only an actor and a singer. He's also like a, like a high up, like a C-suite position. Like, yeah, like an executive because he's been there so long. Mm. He's so the he, he, non-executive director. That's his role name, apparently. Okay. So due to the violations, Kakao will likely have to sell either SBS MNC or SMCNC shares within the next six months. <laughs> so the reason for it, wow. right, is because PPLs are sold by SM MMC to other companies, right? PPLs mm-hmm. are sold. Okay. SMCNC sells ads for other companies to broadcasters like SBS MNC. So it's a conflict of interest because the SM thing oftentimes sells ads to the SBS thing that they that Kakao owns both oh. of them. Oh. I see. Yeah. Yeah, you can't do that. <laughs> so there's a, there's a conflict of interest <laughs> because like SM produces ads and they sell them to SBS who also sells them to other people, but it's like both companies are in the same under the same umbrella, so apparently that's not allowed. There's a loop. There's uh, a loop going on. Yeah, so they're apparently going to have to messy, figure out how to do messy, that. Messy. So it's messy. <laughs> what that happened there? Um, additionally, this is in terms of Cacao Entertainment, so it's one of the things in Cacao, right? They're they're having problems. They uh, recorded an operating loss last year for the first time in seven years. Um, recently, wow. they got rid of their entire stake in Antenna. <gasps> so really? Cacao does not control Antenna at all. Um, Yu Hyeol and Yu Jae Suk bought the the forty two percent that they got rid of. Mm. Oh wow! Okay. So now Yu Hyeol and Yu Jae Suk own really significant portions of Antenna. Yeah. So apparently they're trying to get rid of all non-performing assets. So they're getting rid of like restaurant brand exactly. Tapas Korea, a comic <laughs> thing that they were doing in India, Cacao's paid TV original service, like sort of like their own Netflix that they made. Oh, they're trying to get rid of all that. this stuff. Nobody was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That. yeah. yeah. So they, they, they've been pulling up giant losses, so they're just trying to get rid of things and consolidate right now. So getting rid of antenna is kind of big, though, for sure. Here's the thing, though. Like, okay, so for context, Kakao is a tech company. I'm, this makes no sense. But yes, Kakao is a tech company. Think of it like mm-hmm. Meta. Yeah. Think of yeah, Meta. Messengers. <laughs> yeah. Being involved in this kind of situation just doesn't make any sense. They, like, expanded without any, like thinking you know yeah so it's like if meta if if meta made a new branch called meta music which is cacao entertainment and then that meta music started buying up companies right like basically yeah and Um, they're starting to get rid of it because none of it was profitable for them also one more thing um so because the 42 percent sorry the 42 percent was sold cacao now owns 58 percent of antenna um 
half half go half goes the rest of the half goes to year the rest of the half goes to Jesus. Okay, yes. Okay, so they do still own the majority of Kakao. I I read that wrong, right? So they I mean, they still own the majority of Antenna, uh-huh. but they're mm-hmm. sold off a lot of it. It says something about their business. Yeah. It says something about their business. It's reflection of it, yeah. Yep. Okay, I got that wrong initially, but no, that but, makes a lot of sense. So they're down to sixty percent of owning. The but company. like, look up what they're doing. They're doing a ran- lot of random crap. Like they got a, I don't know. Like, fix your it messenger. Seems, it's it. What it seems like to me <laughs> is that since they're posting these losses, they're trying to compensate by selling percentages of the companies that are underperforming. So they're like making it up. Probably, right? probably. That's probably what they're doing. Yeah. Overall, not a good sign. People are saying like. Cow's a bit of a mess right now because they're 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 bloated. They said they own too many things and mm. it's all over the place. And they're and they're blind, which is like a basically Korean Korean uh, glass door. Everyone's like, this is like, dude, it's a mess. Nobody knows what's going on. It's like oh, chaos. No. Dang. All right, next thing, DSP Media and Beats Entertainment to debut a five member girl group, Young Posse. Oh this boy, year. what Young a name, Posse. Young, Young Posse. Posse. <laughs> They got the unlao, dude. They got like the dots over the oh. Oh my oh. god. <laughs> yeah, I don't. I don't <laughs> yeah, they're gonna do it. Okay, I mean, admittedly, DSP has fell off ever since Kara left, right? Um, so, yeah. Well, they had so Ra- Rainbow, Rainbow, and then who else was under DSP? Gavi and Jay. Yeah, boy group. I think there's a new boy group. Mire. DSP. Yeah. Yeah, Mire. Card. Yeah. They have card. Art. They have card. card. They have card. If card. Yeah. Okay, it makes sense. All right. Well, now Young Posse joins the stacked lineup. They had April too, but they got rid of that. You remember? Oh, yeah. Well, let's be honest. That didn't really go too much. Um. Yeah. Okay. So that's that one. Uh, Next one. New girl group audition show. Universal Ticket unveiled the first forty-one contestants. Forty-one. Forty-one. There's more. There's more. First forty-one contestants. How many do we got? Nine, nine, nine. There's more kids. I think a couple of them were released today. I know one of the girls from Signature is going to be on it. Oh, no. Yeah. Oh. It's not you, Mish Chloe. It's not her. Okay. It's, uh, it's okay. not her, but some of the other members are going to be on the show. So last week, I, I had this in the script, guys. We didn't mention this, but I had listed all the, the competition shows that were going on. Right. Um, oh, yes. We saw yeah. it. Yes. The ones that were finished, Boys Planet, Peak Time, Girls mm-hmm. Reverse, Fantasy Boys. Those one ended. Ongoing right. or upcoming and uh, NCT Universe Universe Ticket Island Two Nizi U Two A Two K Are You Next Queendom Puzzle A Two K is like it's like American Idol like oh. it's released twice a week on YouTube I believe and it's like thirty uh-huh. minute chunks at a time. Okay, wow, interesting. It's like a YouTube show, and like they do auditions in five different American cities, right? The auditions, like normally on like American Idol, there's like four, three, four judges sitting at a table. Yeah. This audition is just JYP sitting at a table. And he's like, yep, sing dance now. Thank you. It's all him. <laughs> it's literally <laughs> just him sitting there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, kind of crazy. Um, yeah. It's a little weird. There's just too many competition shows right now. It's like, a little know. bit of a surge nowadays. I wonder why. I wonder yeah. why. They're not getting I mean, that many views, these You shows. can't really argue against it because Zero Base One achieved the fifth highest first week sales of any artist in Hanto history oh with their debut God. album. Whoa. So this is not <laughs> just mind. that just debuted or rookies. This is out of everyone's album. It's the fifth highest first day, first week sales. Wow. Let's look at the number here. It is uh, 1.8 million. Ooh, just for debut. Oh my god! Yeah, one point eight million albums sold in the first week, the fifth highest number ever. Uh, I'm numb to these big numbers now. <laughs> and they all and all nine kids appeared on Amazing Saturday Naruto this week. I mean, here's oh. the thing, right? Ah. Like, I understand the potential success right off the bat with this audition show. However, it's a bit of a red ocean, you know. It's Mm. You know, it's, we got a lot. Too Here's much the fish thing. in if the they, ocean here. If they continue to put up these big of a numbers, right? Like these ridiculous numbers, millions. There's a huge argument to keep them together. Is there not? Mm, no, yeah. there is. Like, yeah. like, let's say their next album sells 4 million albums. If I'm, all the com- if I'm all the companies that are involved in this, I'm like, I guess we just keep our kid in there. One eighth, one ninth of that money is still a lot. 
you know? Yeah. Well, you know, when people but you know how all you know how all these companies think they could do it better. Right? Everyone's they gonna be get like greedy. Yeah. people get greedy. Oh, they get so greedy. Ooh, my boy could do a solo. That really makes me think of Eyeswood and how much how many albums they'd be selling right now if it's still together, you know? Oh man. Well, you Sorry, know, yeah. if anything, Eyes One proved we could have the Seraphim, Ive, and all okay, these if, other if we adventures. Had, if we had, if we had Eyes One Light, like I suggested, or some of the kids stayed, they could still oh. be selling a ton. Just saying. Um, Possibility. We'll see. Here we go, though. But two, two million this. albums basically in the first week is an absolute crazy number. Crazy. Yeah. We're going to have to watch this group because they got about like, what, it's like two years to do this. They're going to sell so many albums, though. Oh, I mean. <laughs> um, next one. NCH Entertainment received a six billion one investment from Rakuten. Oh, so, you know it's it, we're in the era of K-pop, right? Where money is just people want to get into the game real bad, right? Like we see companies like Mod House just pop up. We even saw the thing with the um with with uh fifty fifties where they just had money and they're like, we're gonna make a K-pop group, and it just popped off. Right, mm, mm. we're just in that era now where there's just money. Like, if it's me and I know this N- NCH company, they have like nature. They got some actors. If it's just me, I would be like, I ain't gonna give them five million bucks, you know. But <laughs> people want to get into the game real bad, so there's a lot of money to go around right now. Well, Ensign just debuted last year. Um, this seems to be their most recent debut. Um, mm. I'm not sure how well it's doing, but you know, if they got five million dollars to spend. You gotta be doing something, right? Let's invest it. I'm gonna yeah. start looking. <laughs> it's kind of crazy where we're at now. Oh, it's crazy, um, yeah. And you remember, like, 2019, during the pandemic, we're like, I don't know, maybe K-pop peaked, y'all. <laughs> like, maybe it's, <laughs> it's going. It's clearly not. Uh, next one. Espa. U.S. debut in August. Oh, okay. Album. Yeah. Ooh. Well, okay. I mean, they're calling it an album, but they call singles albums. It's gonna be like oh, three tracks and, and then two instrumentals and one remix and it's an album. And right, an guys? explicit version and a clean version. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh. Well, I was gonna have to say go listen to the explicit version, dog, because it's not in the music video. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, and, yeah I was telling that. people on the Discord because they were shocked that like since I work like five minutes away from my house, yeah. there's I don't have time to listen to the radio, right? Like I work five minutes away from where I live. No yeah. So I primarily sound. listen yeah. to I listen to music while I like sit at the computer, right? Yeah. And I just put up, pull up the YouTube playlist and I just play them. So it is what it is. Um, I'm not scrubbing any numbers or something. Um, okay. <laughs> Super Shy by New Jeans achieved its first perfect all kill on the charts. There we go. So, let's go. Let's go. All kill for New Jeans. Super Shy. Super Shy. There's so many TikToks, dude, of this song. It's, it's so okay. Unavoidable at this it's point. Great. Dude, I'm like gonna memorize the dance soon. It seems pretty hard. Right? I got it memorized. <laughs> right? oh, it's good. Anita TikTok coming soon? Oh, I no, have a question, no, Anita. <laughs> I have a I have a fashion question as a oh. male that I don't know any better. Mm-hmm. They're wearing like a, it's not even like um what is it called? Performance bloomers or something like that. They're wearing like bicycle shorts mm-hmm. and they wear skirts Bike over shorts. it. Yeah. How do you feel about that? Mm, I'll be honest. At first, I thought like it was a very interesting choice. Yeah. But the way that they style them, it looks more purposeful. Like you can obviously tell, like they're a part of the outfit. Like they're not just meant to be like safety shorts. So I it's think like, it works. It's like beyond safety mm. shorts at this point, though, right? For some. Oh no! Yeah, like... it's very much a part of the outfit. Like, it's meant yeah. to be seen. It's not. Yeah, like, that was just a trend skirt. I noticed because in this music video specifically, that's like one yeah. of the main, mm. the main looks. All right, uh, so we had that one. All right, next thing we got right here is Jew Honey. He just oh. had that solo debut. He's going to the military. Aww. Oh. <laughs> All I noticed, great handwriting. I like this handwriting he got going on in his letter. Um, <laughs> that's what I noticed, right? It's, it's interesting. <laughs> but yeah, he's going to the military. He's enlisting on July 24th, so in about a, in about a week. Man's oh, just soon. appeared on Running Man two weeks ago. Oh, oh wow. man. Well, best, best of, of luck. luck. Yeah. yeah. Safe travels, man. All right, we got some dating news. Ooh. Brave Girls, BB Girls, Yu Jong is in a relationship with E.Q. Han, the actor. Oh. Ooh. They met during a, a filming of the KBS program. I don't know. I don't know what that is. Yeah, that one. 
Um, which broadcast in February, and they've recently started dating. I think the age gap is like she's twenty seven, he's forty. Oh, what? What? Oh wow. Oh what? Oh boy. Yeah. Hold on. What? <laughs> yeah, he's forty. That's the gap. Uh, 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 um. <laughs> well. Okay. Okay. Oh, okay. he's forty two. Okay. He's forty two. He's forty two. Okay. Forty two. Forty two. How old is she? How old is she? Uh, she is uh 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 uh. <laughs> Oh, she's 32. Okay, 10 year, 10 year. 10 years? Uh, a little better, I guess. <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. We got more dating news. Wow. People probably don't know who these people are, but M. Black's Thunder. This is Sandra Park's brother. I know brother. who he is. Sandra yes. Park's brother, right? From M. Black. Um, and Gugutan's Mimi will be tying the knot. Huh? At some <gasps> some point next to year. Them. So the couple recently went public on a TV show. With their relationship before Amazing. years. Amazing. And this Aww. is at the point now where Gugudan is pretty nugu. M Black's been kind of out of the the, the popularity in so long that everyone was very life. positive about this. They were all like, Yeah, that's great. <laughs> that's great. Yeah. <laughs> congrats for them. For them. Appropriate too. He's uh thirty two, she's thirty. So yeah, congratulations to them. <laughs> oh my god, congrats. Uh she's gonna be uh Sandra Park's uh, uh sister in law. Wow. Oh wow. <laughs> Right? If you think about that, right? That is correct. That's cool. Yeah. yeah, they've been dating four years, long time. So this is, everyone's happy. Nice. Good nice. for them. I think this is great because they announced their relationship. Everyone's happy. They People are talking about them now. It's just a smart move. It makes sense. Hmm. Yeah. And they both had Instagram posts talking about it. They're like, yeah, each other, it's great. Oh, oh my God. Yay. Yeah. Good for Good them. Good for them. Um, next thing, Straight Kids will be headlining Lollapalooza Paris uh, this month Ooh. and performing at the Global Citizens Festival in New York City in September. Oh, wow. wow. Look at those That's names. That's pretty cool. Look at that. Right? Yeah. So they're going to be doing that the, the concerts in Central, Parks, uh, Central Park, and they're going to do Lollapalooza in Paris. They're the first day headliner. The third day headliner is Kendrick Lamar, by the way. Whoa. Wow. Yo, they got Central C. I like Central C. <laughs> Um, yeah, so this is this is pretty cool, right? Yeah, no, yeah. I'm looking at the, For instance, uh, Little Nas X is a second liner on day two. For for oh. Global Citizen Festival, the headliners are Red Hot Chili Peppers, Miss Lauren Hill, Megan Thee Stallion, Conan Gray, and then mm. Stray Kids. Look at that. Yo. Wow. Yo. Look at that. That list. They're doing it. That's really cool for them. I'm sure they're going to have a great time. That's wild. Um, additionally, Icons J, right? Mm, well, okay, I'm dumb. Is this is, I normally don't cover these. I thought this was a concert list. <laughs> <laughs> I thought he was announcing a tour. No, uh, okay. concert, but... oh, Icon's Jay having a solo. Oh, oh good for him. him! Good for him! him. God damn it. Get on the line. Doesn't this, doesn't this look just like a concert list? <laughs> so it's like a, the solo activity bit, schedule? Yeah. I, okay, I have a real one though. Bam Bam. World tour, right? Okay. World tour, though. Oh. Um, so far, he announced Seoul, Manila, Macau, Kuala Lumpur, Bangkok. So he's hitting up um, Southeast Asia, which makes sense because he is from Thailand. And this is more. Mm. So he'll probably be coming to the U.S. at some point. So if you're a Bam Bam fan, nice. that's pretty cool. That's a cool poster. Yeah, it is. Yeah. It kind of. Yeah, I like this logo. This is the astronaut. Lastly, uh, KCON LA 2023 convention special guest, guys. We got Plave, the VTuber group. Oh my god! Oh my god. Oh, the VTuber. It's it's one of the AI groups, right? I think. Yes, I. So y'all remember saw Maeve, some of their TikToks, right? Yeah. We now got Plave, and they're gonna be making an appearance at KCON LA. This, the whole group, the whole concept, re it's really interesting. A little confusing, but they have like wow. Some idols who were who didn't do too well as like dancing for the mocap wise, right? I believe. Something like that. Really? Is it this group? Maybe. Oh, I, I just... The, the only thing I know is that um, they do the full body, like, virtual idol thing, right? So they upload a lot of, like, videos of them dancing, doing covers, singing. They have their, their own songs as well. Um, very interesting. I don't know so, who is so the voice it behind is them. A, it is non AI. It is a virtual Correct. idol group where yeah. essentially they have some guys who are ex idols or ex trainees who are like dancing and singing, but the presentation mm. is these virtual dudes. Yeah. Interesting. So interesting. Oh, it is a non AI group. So there's like actual people 
behind these virtual characters who are doing the dancing and the singing. And they're the special guests. Okay. Yeah. Okay. How's that gonna work? <laughs> look at look at look at these dude these avatars, man. This guy looks a little pretentious over here on the left. <laughs> Ooh, right. <laughs> Wow, I'm of, so curious how this is gonna like work. Fung from um, one us, this guy on the left, doesn't it? No, no, no. He also bit. looks like that guy from NCT, the guy who speaks English. What's his name? What? Uh, There's a Mark? couple of them. Yeah, I know. Not Mark. The other guy, the guy with long hair as well. Johnny. Johnny. He kind of looks like Johnny. It kind of <laughs> looks like Johnny and Huang Hung fused, Put right? Together, I mean, yeah. This guy. <laughs> So yeah, that's, if you're into that, hey, more All power right. to you. Um, that ends part two. So just like episode 244. Uh, next week though, we got Me Day, New Jeans, Oh My Girl. Pretty exciting there. After the break, we're going to be doing apparently a Sandwich World Cup. So if you are here just for the mm -hmm. K-pop, this is your uh, stopping point. But uh, people want to stick around and listen to us debate sandwiches. We'll be back after a break. Three, two, one. Special shout outs to our Fiesta patrons. Bagel, Based Mina, Brian, Chano, Delmonic, Ellie, Irvtron, Flacco Louie, Genki Boy, Okumama, Honey Pool, Jacob, Liam's Games and Toy, Luke Daniel, NJ Park, Tear. Thank you. And special thanks to our Discord server mod, Jacob, K Music Erde, Koala, Max, No Bias Nuna, Tuggles, and Wolf297. Alright, what are we doing, Warren? Alright, uh, we know the drill. We're doing a World Cup today. We are going to go through 16 sandwiches. We're going to try to figure out what is the best sandwich in the world. Just best type of sandwich. In the world? In oh the God, whole okay. wide world uh, in which the three of us reside. I could name what my favorite sandwich of all time was. It's not on this list because it's a specialty sub. Oh, is it? Right. What is it? When I was growing up, there was a pizza shop around the corner. They yeah. had a sandwich Ooh. called the blob, no. right? It's called the blob. The blob? The blob. Okay. The blob. Blob. B -L -O -B. blob. Okay. The blob. It was chicken cutlets, right? Mozzarella uh -huh. cheese. So you're thinking like a chicken parm sub, right? Uh-huh. But uh -huh. instead of marinara sauce, they would put penne vodka sauce on it. Ooh. Oh, oh, my I know that God. Sauce. The yes. vodka sauce on the sub, dude. It was so good. Oh, man. It was, spicy, oh, it was so good. Mm. That was like my, oh, when I was growing up, that was like the best thing ever. That sounds so good. So good. I like low key had like a very light dinner, so I'm like actually kind of. Hungry. I'm getting hungry right yeah. now. All right, let's get yeah. let's get into these sandwiches. <laughs> All right, let's get started. <laughs> Sixteen sandwiches. No, I'm not talking to you, Siri. Get out of here, please. Let's begin. Okay, first <laughs> round: a bacon, egg, and cheese, salt, pepper, ketchup versus baked bean sandwich. Oh man, baked beans. So they eat beans on toast in in England. Oh, it's a thing. It's a oh, uh, <laughs> New York versus London round over here. It's like, from what I understand, mm. it's like, you know, the Bush's beans you can get in the cans. Like, put that a on, like, sweet. some bread and they eat it. Mm. Which, honestly, is not terrible. I wouldn't think this. It's probably it, okay. It's true, but it could be better. Okay. It's just uh, straight I'm, beans? Well, sometimes you add else. butter on the toast. So, that's a B-E-C-S-P-K, right? If yep. you do not know. So, bacon, egg, and cheese, salt, pepper, ketchup, which is, like, the, the well. standard sandwich in New York City. Sometimes it's that one's on like a, a poppy seed roll. People also get them on bagels, which is what I like mm, to do. Bagels. Mm. Are you? A, I think. Are you a bagel bacon age, bacon egg and cheese guy, Doug? Well, I'm from New Jersey, so I'm a pork roll or ta Taylor ham egg and cheese person. It's a. It's like our Dang. own thing. Interesting. Like the it, like if I had to describe pork roll, if you don't know what it is, number one, people argue in New Jersey whether you call it pork roll or Taylor ham. There's like a big argument. There's a map about the argument, like where what, what county you live in. <laughs> People are get very protective of that. It's pork roll, by the way. Um, but <laughs> if I had to describe it, it's it's a it's like somewhere in between ham and spam. It's somewhere in between oh. there. Okay, look, yeah. you still but eat bacon, egg, and cheese. People. It's okay. It's okay. 
Bacon, egg, and cheese. I feel like bacon, egg, and cheese, you can never go wrong. It's it's great in the early morning. It's also great when you're drunk and you need to sober up. Um, baked bean sandwich. I was curious one day about these British foods. So I made one myself. I made some toast, buttered it up, opened up a can of baked beans, put it on the thing, add a slice of cheddar cheese on it. It's not bad. I mean, not that bad. No, it's it actually really, pretty good. Mm. Well, because the beans in the can are a little sweet, so it comes down to how much you like beans, fam. Yeah. That's what this comes down to. It's Baked kind, beans. Right. Like that. It's kind of like... Kind of, it kind of tastes a lot like ketchup, which I like to begin with. I, I, I get this is where it's coming from. I don't know. Hmm. You know, the, I'm a huge breakfast sandwich proponent. Yeah. Um, yeah. Like, it's got to pick the breakfast. Although, these days, I heard Big in New York City, cheese. it's getting really expensive for some of these in some places. Or they got some of those bougie places that are charging you like 11 bucks for one of these. Oh, what the hell? Yeah, dude. Whoa. In like the rich How big are in, like, they? in like Tribeca. It's just like a normal roll. It's not that big. In like Tribeca and stuff, there's like these bougie ass places that are trying to charge you 11 bucks for this. Ugh. Back in the day, this was like a $4 sandwich, like $3.50, $4, $5. Okay. Max. Yeah, it's definitely a little more than that now. I it's pay like about seven five. now, right? No, I pay five for like seven? five, five, six. Yeah, that's yeah. that's reasonable. All right. Look, well, I live in New York. I got to pick bacon, egg, and cheese here. It's great. Yay. Breakfast sandwiches are that's great. Good. I'm, I'm sorry. One thing better, though, London. breakfast burritos even better. Just saying. Oh. Okay. Well, it's best sandwich, not best burrito. Moving on to round two, we have yakisoba pang versus the Italian sub. Oh. Okay, I've never had a yakisoba pang, but I, I ate an Italian sub for lunch and dinner today. <laughs> <laughs> and this is the picture of the place that I go, which is called Tasty Sub in Edison, New Jersey. It's there a really good go. spot. There's oh, three wow. locations. Free that was an Ita- Italian meats. It's great. There you um, go. I've always Question. been curious about this yakisoba pan. Mm. Okay. You guys have both never have had it. I've seen it, it never had it. No. Well, Just okay. The yakisoba. No, no, no. It can. It can. It can. Yeah. Typically, yakisoba has either shrimp or chicken on pork on chicken it. Chicken in it or pork in it. Yeah. Ah, uh-huh. If you've seen anime, if you watch anime, I'm sure you've seen it at some point. It's like a go to meal for like high schoolers. It's carbs on carbs, though. It's carbs on day. carbs, which, I mean, sometimes that works. It's just all the yakisoba pans I've had, like, unless you're eating it right out when it's hot, it, it gets dry really quickly. Um, mm. Either like, it's just kind of kind of bland afterwards because yakisoba in general, they don't put the high quality stuff in the sandwiches. I Additionally, guess. the yakisoba pan mm. comes in a bag, so it's typically mass produced, right? From what I understand. Well, I mean, yeah. Yeah, right. Yeah, most of these convenience store sandwiches are. I don't know. All I will tell you is that I tried to go to like a yakisoba pan, like specialty place back when I was in Tokyo. They were closed when I went, so I'm pissed off. So I will choose the Italian here. So that Italian sub in that picture, it has pressed ham, salami, boiled ham, capicola, prosciutto. And pepperoni, oh, man. and there's cheese All in it, and I believe that one, that one wasn't mine, but that one looks like it has lettuce, tomato, salt, pepper, mayo, onions, vinegar, and mayo, yeah. was that one. Oh, was and that whole wow. thing, that's a half a salt, that's seven bucks. Oh my god. Wow, it's very price efficient. Yeah. Um, This yakisoba pot, I'm sure it tastes great, because I like bread. I like yakisoba, right? <laughs> but like, I don't know. Together, it just doesn't make a lot of sense. Like, you're just it's waiting to get to the ginger shape in the middle. For me. And those two on mm. the top have the cutie mayo on it too, from what I can tell. Mm. Nah, I rather just go with an Italian. So yeah. Um, yeah. What do you guys get at Jimmy John's? This is a because Jimmy John's is a uh, sub Jimmy. chain. I don't go to Jimmy John's. There's a lot of them in Michigan. I like Jimmy John's a lot. You guys don't need it. You go to Pop Belly. <laughs> why, why are you going to Jimmy John's? Okay, Pop Belly's better, but I like Jimmy John's. I'm not a huge fan of hot subs. Nah, you go to. <gasps> Wait, I always toast up. my subs. I don't, like, Jimmy John's don't toast the subs, right? No, I don't no. think they do. I, uh, my I my Italian sub way. here, you it's sacrilege. You can't you can't heat that one up because the meats have a lot of oils in them. Right? Okay, that's true. Be, yeah. yeah, it'd be a mess. But, like, um, I would... Okay, it's not on the list today, but typically, I'll take a panini over a sandwich. Fair. Oh. Okay, that's fair. Yeah, that's like it's, it's kind of toasted. It's warm. You know what right. I mean? Like Melted cheese and whatnot. Exactly. 
fucking pull. All right, Italian. We'll go, Italian here. Italian, Italian takes the win. Italian, oh, Italian. Italian that's, takes the win here. That, that's that's a classic sub. It actually is. Normal sub. The East Coast sub. All right, round three. We have Tuna Salad versus Isaac Toast. Um, oh, I've had Isaac Toast. What's Isaac? So, Isaac Toast? Isaac Toast, or Isaac Toast, is a Korean oh, breakfast meal. Um, oh. You get two pieces of milk toast, a uh, slice of American cheese, coleslaw, marinated cabbage, some bacon, uh, some jam, um, onions. Jam. What else goes into that? Onions. Thing, so the, the interesting thing about Isaac Toast is the, the weird things that you put in in Korea, right? A lot of cabbage, which is typically not an American sandwich. No. They put jam. I've also seen them sprinkle a little sugar on it as oh, well. Yeah, they sugar do that. goes in it. Yeah, 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 it goes in it. Big sugar. It's a very, it's like a breakfast sandwich, Anita, but very crunchy because of the cabbage and sweeter than you would think as an American sandwich. Hmm. They put pickles in it, sweet pickles in it too. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They do. And uh, like, there's a bunch of variations with like bulgogi meat, which is like, yes, you yeah. know. Ooh. Um, Sounds good. The easiest location for you to go if you're a tourist in Korea, there's many in near Myeongdong. There's a lot of them there. Honestly, like wherever you go, you'll, you're you're bound to find one because they're popular with the tourists. They're popular with students. They're popular with like um. Some, some sometimes they have them in like a subway station. There's a lady cooking toasts. You yeah, know? No. I've seen that too. Mm -hmm. Like look at these oh, photos. Really good. Look, 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 it's amazing. Yeah, or if you want to know more about Isaac Toast, Korean Englishman, the YouTube channel, they always talk about toast in a lot of the videos. Oh they even, yeah, yeah, yes. They even okay, opened yes. their own toast shop in like a pop up in L London. They've that. done that before. Yeah. Mm. It's very good though. Yeah. Okay, so this is how it's made. You, you, that's a lot of mayo. On that's that. a lot of... There's double mayo. Oh, no. That, that one has mayo. They're going to put ketchup on that next, dude. Holy oh, look at that. Oh. <laughs> so much... So no. many condiments, dude. Okay, I can't open the image for some reason. But you get the idea. Oh, look at that. Yeah. Um. Anyways, that's Isaac Toast. Tuna salad. You get tuna some salad's good though. Canned tuna. You put some mayo mm. on that. I don't know. You throw in some pickles on it, some red onions, uh, and you mm. slice it. And it's, sorry, you stick it between two to pieces of toast. Um, when I was mm. when I was a child, I used to eat this like three times a week. You could put that on wow. saltine crackers too. It's great. It's so great. That's what that. I usually do. Yeah. Saltine crackers. I prefer chicken salad to tuna salad. Oh what? Bro, there's there's two chicken salads at Trader Joe's right now. One, there's a curried one and a regular one. Oh, so good. I've never had chicken salad and enjoyed it. I'll be honest. What? Because I'm always like, why would I eat chicken cold when it's meant to be eaten warm? I it's, agree that. It's meant to be fried <laughs> and you don't be put, consumed you don't put with some You don't beer. put ch chicken on your salad or anything? Dude, I never put... I, okay, you know what? That's I the actually, only okay. time it's cold for me. On a salad. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. Huh. I think tuna but salad. But Isaac just, toast. Yeah. That looks Isaac, really good. Isaac toast is better than tuna yeah. salad. Yeah, but tuna salad oh, is texture wise. Okay, Look what at about, that. What about the barbarians who are getting the tuna salad that's been sitting out all day at like Subway? Okay. Oh, no. God. That, that will actually that. make you sick. Don't do that. People Bro, I some of the people I used to hang out in Arbor, they would always get the tuna salad. Like, Why are you getting the tuna salad? It's like the, the scariest thing on this menu. So if you remember correctly, I was one of those people. Um, was that you? Did yes. you get sick from it at some point? No. Oh. I was happy. Why are you bulldozing over my happiness <laughs> here? What why, is going on? Why are you on? trusting the tuna salad in some way? Dude, okay. No, no, no. <laughs> it's worth the risk. That's what it it's is. Worth it's worth it the risk. <laughs> it is? You I might get diarrhea, but you know. Your, your tuna salad, do you like when they put like some fun stuff in there? They put like red onion or oh, yeah. I've even seen them put like... I've seen tiny bits of grapes or stuff in grapes. Like, uh, no, they do that no, these no, days. In they the, do that. Chicken Ooh. salad, they put like cranberries these days. Like they put very oh interesting my. things in them. Um, I yeah. like I like putting uh, sweet pickles in mine a little bit. Like you chop them up. Here's a here's a here's a fun fact. Like relish. If you want a, a healthy tuna salad because you can't be eating mayo, use non-flavored yogurt. <laughs> oh. Okay. Do that. I guess that would work, yeah. Yeah, but like half the reason you eat tuna salad is because of mayo. It's because you want to put mayo in your mouth. Because I want to put cupy mayo in my mouth. Like, it that's it. flavor. It's like, I want cupy mayo in my mouth without feeling like a fat boy about it. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> I vote tuna salad. Too much nostalgia Isaac factor. toast. Isaac toast. Yeah, you've never even had Isaac toast. What if it tastes awful? It looks so good, though. I'm sure it's it tastes so awful. 
<laughs> bro, every single no, one won't. in the touristy areas has a line out the door because it's it's a tourist. It's a very famous thing. If okay, if you're a tourist going to Korea, try to go to the one next to a college town or like a yeah, university. Yeah, don't go to the one in Myeongdong like I did, dude. Yeah. I waited like thirty minutes for the sandwich. It was good though. The ones next to the colleges, they're quick. They're fat. They know what they're doing. <laughs> they gotta be. All right. Oh wait, shoot! No, I chose the you, wrong one. No. Okay, that was honestly a mistake. We'll count that as the toast from from now on. Okay. Um, okay. Round four, we have cheesesteak versus chicken sandwich. We got a Ooh. Philly cheesesteak and we got a chicken sandwich. Growing up at my elementary school, Thursdays was cheesesteak day. It was. Was I that just, your favorite? I have, I have so much like nostalgia for it. It was so good. Uh, you can ask anyone who went to my elementary school. Yeah. The best meal was the cheesesteak day, for sure. That being said, as an adult, I feel like cheesesteaks have uh, uh, fallen off a little bit. What? To be honest. I'm not really? a huge... I, don't, I think it's too much. Too much messy. what? I usually get that, too. Same. I'd rather cheese eat cheese? a Popeye's chicken sandwich. Ah. Okay. Mm. No. Okay. First of all, never get your chicken sandwich from Popeye's. Do you, which, which fast food place do you think is Chick -fil -A. better? Chick-fil-A. Chick-fil-A oh, is pretty dude, good. Popeyes is better. No, 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 no. Popeyes and KFC. I've tried both. Popeyes and KFC, their chicken sandwiches, like the chicken patty or whatever, like fried chicken piece, it's always like really dry for some reason. Your yours mm -hmm. might be. My ears is fine. Maybe. All I'm gonna <laughs> say is friends. my sample size is Michigan, America. Sorry, Michigan, New York, and Korea. It's all hey, like you that. get the chicken sandwich from Popeyes and you put on the like sweet and sour sauce on like the hot honey sauce they got sometimes mm -hmm. on it. Okay. Well, they did a Megan the Stallion, like, or was it Lizzo or Megan the Stallion? One of the two had a collab with uh, Popeyes for a while, and they had this hot honey sauce. Your oh your 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 Popeyes hot honey sauce ain't got shit on my Chick Fil A sauce. Y'all like cheesesteaks <laughs> that much? Okay, I, I will like actually vote for cheesesteak here. To be honest. Explain, explain. I I never got like the like. I think it's just a big old mess. You know. That's kind of why you go for it. It's a big old mess. Sometimes you want a big old mess. Like imagine <laughs> like this. Like it's like it's like it's like two a.m. You're you're coming back from like a night out. You're like kind of drunk but kind of sobering up. You want something to fill your belly. You want something oily so, so like so that so that it absorbs all the vodka shots that you shouldn't have taken. You know what I mean? Do you like when there is real cheese or cheese whiz on your? Real you know cheese. what I'm talking real about? Cheese. Real, real cheese. cheese. Real cheese. Real cheese. Tradi real cheese. Traditionally, the, all the Philly places use cheese whiz. Yeah, so you know how you notice how I said cheesesteak, not Philly cheesesteak? This is kind oh, of why. Shit. Okay. I'm, dude, I'm <laughs> serious about my cheesesteak. <laughs> wow, okay. Yeah, because you know, in Philly, it's a, most of them are whiz, the famous one. Apparently, the difference, supposedly, is if it's just cheese and steak, it's just a cheesesteak. But if it has green peppers and onions, then it's a Philly cheesesteak. Onion, yeah, because you say whiz wit or whiz without. Yeah. You know? The um, the veggies I'll take whatever. I'll if I I like mine with banana peppers as well. Right, I y'all love the mm. cheesesteak, so I guess it's winning. I would vote for chicken sandwich. Anita, I mean I like chicken sandwich. It's just that sometimes I guess I'm big on texture. I feel like sometimes chicken, if it's like crispy like that, it's like not as enjoyable to eat. Like it's more it's harder exactly. to eat. <laughs> there the you cheese go. Cheesesteak is is it's not. That like it's always like nice, pleasant. No, it's, not no real obstruction. It you know feels what, like you're you, at home. You know what? what I would <laughs> vote for to make to like the semifinals, but it's definitely not on his list. Sametas Anita. What's that? Mexican Semitas? sandwich. Oh yeah. Oh. yeah, yeah. How, how do I spell this? Good. C e m i e i t a s. Sametas. This looks like a burger. If you actually have them, there's like a ton of avocado, and some places put like a shit ton amount of cheese on it. Oh like, wow! It's it's insane. Mm. Um, let me find you a picture from one of the NYC. Ones. Oh, okay. So it has a semita roll, papalo leaves, pickled jalapenos, cheese. Mira well, you can get them with you can get them with many different types of like meats combinations and things like that. Okay, that was good. Orin, here's a picture from one of the famous places in, in New York City. And look look how much cheese is on this. Oh, oh that's wow. so much cheese. That's a little too much. <laughs> Dude, not even not, melted. This place is famous for this. It's uh, Samitas El Tigre. Interesting. <laughs> yeah. Ooh. A very famous spot in New York. It's insane. Can I, can I make one more comment about chicken sandwiches? For sure. Chicken sandwiches? Yes. Why do we call them sandwiches? Because they're in between two pieces of bread. To me, this is a chicken burger. No, dude, 
No. Everyone <laughs> else in the world calls it a chicken burger except for Americans. Because it's not a chicken. Dude, How it's not a chicken burger. It's between brioche buns that makes it a burger. <laughs> You're insane. It's not a chicken burger. It's. I'm telling you. It's only the it's people in the question. Americas. I just don't know the justification behind it. That's all I'm saying. Looks like a burger to me if you swap out you can, the chicken you, patty you for make, like a patty. You can, make a, you can make a burger using ground chicken, though. So what's, what's the difference there? Is it the patty? Is it the patty shape that's different for burgers? For me, yeah. Burgers like mm. ground meat that's put into a patty form. That's a, that's okay. a burger. Okay, so a requirement for a burger is that it is a sandwich that has ground meat patty. Yeah. Mm. Okay. So technically, I feel, like that, I feel like that makes sense, doesn't it? Technically, the Chick Fil A sandwich has uh -huh. ground chicken patty in it. That's not the Chick Fil A one is ground. Actually, no, it that's is? not true. No, it's not. No, it's, it's not. not. You're <laughs> gaslighting, dude. I've never You're had that. <laughs> no, dude. Okay. All right. Okay. <laughs> Cheese steak. Man, English is weird. Cheese steak wins. Oh. San chicken sandwich is really good, though. That's like a default that's for me. Fine. All right, we have a classic peanut butter jelly sandwich versus roast beef and Swiss. Okay, okay. See, this one is a bad representation because you could get this as a French dip where it comes with au jus on the side. You're talking about roast beef. I'm talking about like a Chicago beef sandwich is essentially this. It comes with a you dip it in broth. To what so, that, okay, that's Italian beef. That's that's a little different. Well, they, they have different presentations of it, but it's it's pretty much roast beef. Okay. When I meant roast, roast beef, beef and Swiss, and Swiss I, I literally really meant like just the, the roast beef and Swiss. The first thing on the menu on the deli, like roast beef and cheese. Girl, you gotta you gotta eat a PB and J. Come on, it's a classic. Yeah, I think that's too simple, you know. Okay, yeah. I'll here's here's what I'll say as like a person who grew up outside of America. I don't get the hype. You're insane. I don't get the hype. PB and J's have been for me in hard times, been there for me in good <laughs> times. It's a classic. When you they're don't easy know to what, make. When you're at lunchtime and you're like, or it's a, and you're like, I don't know what I want. You could eat a PB and J, and you're you're fine, fine. They're classic. Okay. They're too I sweet. wouldn't go for it. You know, like if I yeah. have an option though, if I'm at a restaurant, I'm not ordering the PB and J. Well, okay, who goes to a restaurant to get a PB and J, Anita? That's what I'm saying. <laughs> Like, oh, I'm at Il Buco. I'm going to take the uh, PB&J. No, no, it's just like that. We're not going to take the It's a classic. When the, gold, when the Golden State Warriors won 73 and 9 in their season to have the oh. all time wins record in a season, right? Okay. Uh -huh. PB&Js were banned from them eating them, but their trainers started sneaking them to them because they wanted it. And a lot of the players have said the reason we won those games was because we had those PB&Js. <laughs> Sounds like a dramatized story to get the fans hyped. <laughs> About PB&Js. About PB Let's go. <laughs> I don't, there's, I don't a, know. There, there's a YouTube channel called Tasting History with Max Miller where oh. he cooks a meal, but he talks about the historical context of the meal. Mm -hmm. So like one of the meals he ate, uh, he made was like Italian soup from Al, pa Al Capone's um, soup kitchen in Chicago back when he was a mobster because he was he had a soup mm -hmm. kitchen to try to look like a good person back in the day. Right. Okay. So one of the yes, episodes he, he had recently a month ago was a PB&J. So he made the original PB&J. From like 1901, oh. yeah. So he talks about the history and how they. Oh no, yeah, yeah the Al Capone, the soup kitchen one. That one was kind of funny. So actually. Al Capone invented PB and J. No, 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 those are two separate episodes. Capone soup oh, kitchen, oh, okay, PB and okay. J, separate episodes. Oh, uh, okay. okay, okay. I was just talking about one of the episodes, or they eat mm. things like that. But PB and J's. When I was watching that, I was talking about the history. It made me proud to know the history <laughs> behind it. That oh, is a historical no. sandwich from 1901. He had a recipe. That's old. Dude, there's a lot of things from 1901. This roast beef and Swiss, is it heated or is it just like straight up roast beef and Swiss on a sin? Is it just like... Heated, I'm, right? No? Uh, heated? I don't know. What does the photo look like to you guys? That looks it's not like, heated. Yeah, it looks it's, cold, I'll be honest. It's and not? This is ass, dude. Hmm. Okay, here's the first time I had a roast beef and Swiss. And I remember very clearly. This was in 2011. I was on a Korean or a Delta air flight from Korea to America. I was coming back. I was like, oh boy, man, this is I'm coming back to this country. And I remember this is what they served late night. 
I was excited for my future, also very oh. nervous and worried. And they gave me this American treat of a cold roast beef and Swiss <laughs> sandwich with a Milano so cookie. Bad. It was great. It was my first impression of America. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Along with the Milano cookies. <laughs> we got this restaurant near me. It was the time when you guys came over and you couldn't eat it because you had to go somewhere. We ate that deli near my house that oh, serves the ridiculous yeah. sandwiches. The giant roast sandwiches. Roast beef is one of the things, dude. I mean, I could get down with a roast beef, too. I'm, I'm telling you. It's like you can never go wrong with a roast beef. And Swiss. Well, like, if you get a PB&J, it's always too sweet. It's always too sugary. You, I have a question. With this roast beef and Swiss, do you put any condiment on it at all? If you want, sure. I mean, that's up to that's a I feel like it's going to be real dry. That sort of sauce in there. What sauce would you put on it? Um, Probably a Thousand Island. Sure. Make it more like a Ooh. Reuben. I mean, let's be honest. The PB&J photo on the left has bananas in it, if you look closely enough. Hey, that's like the Elvis, dude. They put honey and bananas in it. Oh, wow. All I'm going to say is I want my meal to be savory and salty, not sweet. I will always choose a PB&J. Anita, you're going to have to make a decision here. Ugh. Well... <laughs> I do skew more towards the savory. There we go. If I'm honest. There we go. Because I feel like there's more of a chance to make it spicy. Wait, Whereas no. like PB&J hey, feels a little, bit, a little bit like dessert. Show that bit. picture. That's the local deli to me. Like the the, the New okay. York City deli. Before you house. do that, before you do that, Anita, you know you can put jalapenos on a PB and J. Like it'll still be spicy. No and way. Sweet. That's yeah, it's, not it, right. People do. People do. People do. Really? Yeah. Yeah, that there's a there, people be like PB and J with pickles. I've seen it before. Okay, this, this is gonna sound really weird. I had a thing where like you know, like Korean oh, people, man. like they eat peppers <laughs> for like, yeah. like they dip yeah. it in like fermented soybean paste and just eat it like that. Oh, yes, the samjang. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, I used to do that with PB like peanut butter. Oh, what? It's uh, really good. It's oh, really good. What? <laughs> Try it out. <laughs> no, no. Get go to your local grocery store. Get a jar I'm not of do this. get a jar of <laughs> peanut butter and like jalapeno yeah, peppers. Jung? Are you talking like samjang? Yeah, like get a jar of peanut butter and oh jalapenos, God, and you dip the. I'm being serious. Like I'm not even trolling right now. Try it. Trust me. This Spicy man's out here dipping PB and J's in fermented soybean paste. No. Get your get your jalapeno. Dip it in the peanut butter, and it's like sweet and spicy. It's great, bro. Just like the espasong. All right, here's Doug. What is this again? Please, please elaborate. This is uh, this is oh my like god, New York. This place is this place is one of the ones near my house called. Um, there's multiple locations. Harold's Deli. So the thing is, it looks ridiculous. It is ridiculous. Why yeah. is that if a you, thing? If if you if you look on the right, what you actually do is you take that big ass sandwich that they present and you make smaller sandwiches. I see. That's what you actually do with okay. the side bread. So it's just the presentation is absolutely ridiculous at this point. That's how it sounds like more work. It's fun though. <laughs> okay. Also, it's really they got. I think this was pastrami, corned beef, and turkey most likely. Oh well, I wow. love me some pastrami. Pastrami is fantastic. Although cats is really expensive. All right, uh, roast beef. Oh, you guys are plug in. All You're right, plug in. Get out of here. GB and J is a first ballot Hall of Famer, guys. Dude, dude, <laughs> uh, diabetes runs in my family. One is all more right, likely right. to give me a higher blood yeah, well, level. Well, go dip your sandwich in, like, gochujang or something. <laughs> <It's all laughs> what? <you. laughs> all right, round six. You have got a tomato sandwich versus a grilled cheese. Grilled cheese. Tomato grilled sandwich. Cheese. You're in. Grilled what do you, cheese. In your tomato sandwich, what else do you put in it? Cream cheese. No. Okay, have you guys tried it? I'm not going no, to. No, I don't like okay, tomatoes Okay, first like of all, that. yeah, Anita, you don't flip and count because you don't like it for some reason. <laughs> Here's what you do. It's very I don't simple. Like to I don't like tomatoes either, but I tolerate them. Okay. They taste great. You, you get two pieces of toast. You get some cream cheese on it. Ideally, some chive cream cho toast. Cause slice up some tomatoes. Put it on the thing. A little bit of, like, basil or, or, or parsley, right? You, got, you want some herbs. Get some balsamic vinaigrette glaze on that thing too, so you got a little <laughs> bit of spice to it, you know. I I could take all of that if there was not cream cheese. To be fair, Wait, what? If you made like a caprese sandwich, that's fine. But like the cream cheese, dude, with all that, I don't know, dude. Plus, with grilled cheese, you can just dip it in tomato soup. Yeah, 
Okay, no, tomato soup go. is gro gross, first of all. No. What? What? Grilled cheese. Why okay. you cook it, right? Grilled cheese. I have this thing against grilled cheese. Why? Why? I think it tastes awful. Like, I've never That's, had grilled cheese. I mean, it depends on the cheese sometimes. I've never yeah, had sure grilled, grilled cheese, cheese and went, wow, this is great. I've never done that in my life. Never. Dang. Never. You gotta get more cheese, more grilled cheese out there. Everyone's always like, oh, yeah, you want a grilled cheese when you're high at like 11 p.m. Like, no, it tastes awful. Why would I want that? No, you want that. It's great. It's very right, homey. Yeah. Homey. It's yeah, great. very cozy. That's the one time grilled where cheese. I find like American cheese like on grilled cheese and on like burgers. Uh, right? That's like when it's acceptable. Mm. Maybe it's because of South Quad. Why, did they have grilled cheese at South Quad? Yeah, and that was awful. I think that was the last time I had it, like back in like second year of college, like six years ago. Nah, oh. dude. If you like, if you if you want to get a little bougie and you get like better cheese and you get like a sourdough mm. bread, right? Like, okay, you can have a party. Uh, see, I feel like that's at that point. That's you don't call that a grilled cheese. That's like it still is a grilled cheese, but it's like something way better than what's typically considered a grilled cheese. I mean, even the standard Wonder Bread and. American cheese is still great, right, Anita? Like, you I think it still tastes pretty yeah, good. Yeah, it's pretty good. I don't know. A little salty. I remember eating it in high school and call it. I think that's what it is, maybe. Like, it reminds me too much of, like, cafeteria food from, like, They serve school. this in your cafeteria? That's ridiculous. Yeah, it was awful. Nobody ate it. Why would they serve this? That's insane. Grilled cheese? <laughs> yeah, that seems like not a cafeteria food. Like, really? I don't, I don't know. Because I feel like... If you leave that, it's you toast the bread, right? So yeah. if you leave it out more than five minutes, it's gonna start to get soggy. soggy. Yeah. Yeah, it was always soggy. Yeah, that's bad gross. timing for you. Bad timing. It? That's why I don't feel like that's a cafeteria food, right, Nita? Doesn't make sense. Yeah. Maybe my Real left cheese. is a lie. Oh no. Um. Okay. Better than this tomato. Tomato thing. sandwiches are great. You guys need to try it. I promise it's gonna be great. No, thank no. you. Just, no, please, just I please listen to me one time. Please, <laughs> let's do it. Maybe one more time. <laughs> <laughs> All right, grilled cheese takes the win. Round seven, we have a pastrami sandwich versus the banh mi sandwich. Oh, sh banh mi. Those are two of my favorite sandwiches. Banh mi are the best. All right, um, on the left is a picture from Katz. Delicacen over uh in That's the, a twenty eight dollar uh, sandwich at Cat's Deli, I believe. Super expensive. Oh my God. But super yeah. worth it, honestly. It's very good. Um Bon Me. Bon Me sandwiches, I like eat them once a week at the very least, because there's a place nearby that does them really well. Does your place put the actual pate on it or not? What's pate? I'm sorry, I don't know what that is. Duck liver. No. Real Bon Me's have duck liver on them. I guess my life is a lie. I, I have not been <laughs> Does your place put mayonnaise instead? Yeah, I asked for Cupy Mayo. See, okay, like Cupy Mayo. Like if if all my v Viets out here who are listening to me, I know, <laughs> dude. Like, I I used to eat like a I used to have a, a regular banh mi, whatever. It is what it is, right? When you go to like the hella traditional places, some of them in like mm -hmm. Chinatown or something like that. Yeah, they put like duck. I don't think it's duck liver. What kind? Some kind of liver pate on it instead mm -hmm. to add funk. Does it taste good? It's funky. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not like, the biggest fan of it, but it that's like the actual way they used to eat it back in the day. Mm. Okay. Um, I'm more Americanized. We put mayonnaise or something else on it. These yeah. Days. Unfortunately, yeah. I have not had it with duck liver pate. Um, I would pate. like to try some. I'll be honest. Um, I just love the pork. You get the pork one. Oh, yeah. It's really nice. I like how it's seasoned. You get a little bit of sweet. You know, something about those quick pickled daikon and um, mm -hmm. carrots is fantastic. It's really nice. The occasional jalapeno is nice. I'm a huge Great. cilantro fan. Great. Throw that shit I in there. I love cilantro. I love cilantro. Everything too. in there. Y'all put uh, sriracha in there too? Hot sauce? Yeah. I, I've yeah. done that on occasion. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Okay. Here's my deal with uh, corned beef and pastrami sandwiches in general. Yeah. It's very heavy. Yeah, no, I, I, I eat five bites of it. It's amazing. And then after that, it's, it's like a... It's, it's extremely decadent. Pastrami is very fatty. Yeah. Very rich. Yeah. Mm. That's why when you go to Cats, if you have a, like a bunch of people, you get like two for four people. Yep. You, you, you only need a Ooh. half of it. Yeah. It's, 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 just, it's a lot. And if you look at that, sand, look at the bread to meat ratio. It's like That's double, rich. triple the beef. <laughs> it's in, crazy. In to the, but it's a Jewish classic pastrami. It's, you know? No, it's great. Oh. Don't get me wrong. It's just... When I'm done with my meal, 
I'm full at the I'm I'm full with both, but something about Ban Mi. Maybe it's the Daikons. It just makes me feel just. If you don't have good. these near you, when you go to New York, you should try both of these things because they're in abundance in, That's true. in New York City. That's true. They're two classics. Um, I, I think more. I would rather eat a Ban Mi more often than a pastrami. Is like a three times a year thing for me. That's about it. Special occasion. Same. Special Same. occasion. <laughs> yeah. When the tourist friends are visiting. All right. I vote Ban Mi. Ban Mi. Ban Mi is great. Bami has everything you want. Bami wins. Bami wins. We move on to round eight with BLT versus Toast Sandwich. Uh, a what? Um, <laughs> so a BLT, Anita, it, it stands for no, Bacon, no, no. <laughs> Lettuce, and Tomato. Um, it's a sandwich for that. all three. Yeah. <laughs> Did you know in, in the culinary world, they consider BLT a tomato sandwich? Because it has a tomato. No, 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 like, in the culinary world, the tomato is the main thing. Like, you know how we oh, think of a BLT, like a lot of people think it's a bacon sandwich, right? No, 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 no. no. It's a tomato sandwich, technically speaking. Okay. It's a toast sandwich, Warren. Y'all are going to call me crazy. I used to get BLTs without the bacon. <laughs> They're just tomato. You just love tomato. <laughs> oh, my God, dude. Sometimes I'll add in, like, avocado. Like, it's great. <laughs> Y'all need to try it. Y'all need to give tomatoes a second chance. I am not... Okay, I know... Okay, here's the thing. Whenever we do World Cups, people are like, oh, we're trolling. He's like gaslighting Anita into doing whatever stupid... I'm like being sense? serious. It's actually believe, good. I can't believe you would get BLT with no B. That's insane. <laughs> right? Anita, that's, that's insane. That's ALT insane. sometimes? Or like chicken? So you would just, so you would just get like... Lettuce, tomato, a little bit of mayonnaise, or some avocado, and you're good. And like sometimes you get grilled chicken on it. It's like a, a chicken club sandwich. sandwich. Well, that's different. That's a completely different thing. Club sandwich. I guess I just don't like bacon in general. What? Uh, I mean, the BLTs are great, right? That's a great. Yeah. Of course. I mean, what is toast sandwich, Warren? What is this? Okay, Anita, it's a, if you haven't noticed, it's bread on, it's bread, on bread. Bread. Between two slices of bread. You add a bit of butter in it. Bread. Okay, no, no. Here's how you make it. I actually looked this up. Because apparently, it's the foundations of British cuisine. I don't know. Someone correct me if I'm well, wrong. A more classic British food is a, is a chip buddy, which is a french fry sandwich. It what? exists. Chip buddy. Chip buddy. Chip buddy. Yeah. See? I eat that. Oh, well, that's a little yeah, better. Yeah, buddy, chip buddy. Right. Thing. It's a thing. It's that's a thing. a little better. Okay, well, <laughs> toast sandwich is a real thing. It has its own Wikipedia page. It, basically, right. wow. you heat up to a, a piece of toast mm -hmm. into toast, right? You put mm -hmm. butter on it. Then you mm -hmm. stick it between two cold slices of bread. And there you go. I see. Yeah. See, I could understand if they just said, like, oh, you, it, it's early in the morning and you're rushing, so you just toast and you put butter in and you just hold it together and eat it or you put some jam. I could get that, right, Anita? That's, that makes sense. Yes. But the fact that we're putting another piece of untoasted toast is ridiculous. Two, two new pieces of toast. That's absolutely. Or untoasted bread, actually. You, you just need the extra energy to get you going in the morning. You know what the I mean? Extra Clearly, carbs. a BLT yeah. is better here. This is the troll pick. BLT. We, I, I, this is, this is a real like thing like toast sandwich like i believe you but i just i, I would prefer told, it's got its own wikipedia page made built in 1861 it says add salt and pepper to taste hey yo max what the hell are you people <laughs> doing over there dude what's um, going on here's what it says wikipedia says a recipe for toast sandwiches is included in the invalid cookery section of the 1861 book of household management by isabella beaton who adds this sandwich may be varied by adding a little bit of pulled meat or very fine slices of cold meat to the toast. Well, then that's completely different. That's just a sandwich. Um, BLT. Ooh, BLT. Look, here's another photo. Look, it's a that's lovely... That's different. She has things in it. That's a regular sandwich. That lady's trolling. No, no, no. But if you look closely <laughs> into this image... Uh, I, I, why can't I zoom in? There's a little, there, that's toast between two pieces of untoasted toast. <laughs> But there's the garnish on it too. Like there's something there's in like there a, as well. There's a cucumber and feta on one side. Sure, right? it looks like add, add cucumber and feta on it. It's just at the, the end of the day, still, it's bread between oh, bread. Still, it's bread on bread on bread. I think it's genius. It's like nah, we're going BLT. Modern BLT. commentary. Click it, click on it. I want to go sleep soon. BLT. Just click. BLT. All right, BLT. BLT. All right, we're going on to the quarterfinals. We have right, BLT versus. Uh, sorry, what was BLT. This? What is it instead of? Uh, Isaac oh, Toast. Wait, wait, wait. Isaac Toast. Oh, Isaac. Isaac, Isaac Toast. Toast wins. Isaac Toast. Okay. Yeah, it's better. Isaac Toast. I agree. You love a BLT, though. 
Grilled cheese versus Italian. 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 Grilled cheese is kind of gross, I'm telling you. Classic salt. It's not. Okay. Cheese steak versus banh mi. Banh mi. Banh mi. Banh mi is so much better. Oh, wait. I actually wanted banh to vote me. for cheese steak here. Nah, you're one for banh mi. Because okay. we got the three. It has everything you want. All right. Bacon and cheese versus roast beef and Swiss. Bacon and cheese. Bacon and cheese. cheese. Fresh cheese. percentage cheese is so much better. Uh, can I get a bacon and cheese? What's up, Papa Ketchup? Please. All right, we are on the semifinals already. Oh, sh- we have a bacon, egg, and cheese versus banh mi. Uh, banh mi's better. Like banh mi. Better. Yeah. Okay. Just banh mi, you could get it varied up with various types of meats, depending on your mood. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Bacon, egg, and cheese is a breakfast. Banh mi is a meal. That's fair. Any time of day. Any time of the day. Banh mi is just fantastic. All right, banh mi takes the win. Italian sub versus Isak toast. Ooh. Oof. Oof. I-, I take the e- Isak, Isak toast, toast yeah. I think. I, between the two, yeah, Isak toast is an yeah. event. It's, it's a little... I do love an Italian. I did eat one today, you know? But if there was an Isak <laughs> toast class. near you, where would you have gone, you know? Like... I'd rather eat the Isak toast, to be fair. Yeah. All right. Don't let the pictures fool you. It is Isak toast versus <laughs> Ban Mi in the final round <laughs> of the Best Sandwich World Cup. Bami wins. Bami. I, I agree, Bami. Yeah, I think Bami's the best one. Now. I am tempted because I've never tried Isak toast, but Bami. Well, Bami's Anita, good. when I go to Korea, I will buy one, freeze one, and bring one back to you. And bring it to me? <laughs> bring it back to you. Sure. Bami's are great. Y'all should try it with the pate, too. It adds a lot of funk. I don't know where there is funk. one like that. Oh, dude, I got like four restaurants in Chinatown. You oh, go. okay. Oh, okay. I don't want to go to Chinatown <laughs> for a sandwich, but okay, I'll, I'll look into it. Um, okay, well, it's been decided. Banh mi is your favorite sandwich of the entire world. If you disagree, please leave a comment down below. Um, if you have your own opinions about sandwich, that is, they are totally valid. If you enjoy tomato sandwiches, please let me know, because um, I, I respect <laughs> you as a person. All right, uh, this has been Soji Talk, your weekly shot of K-pop. I'm Doug. I'd like to thank Warren and Anita for joining me for episode 244. Next week, I think it's like N-Mix... And then who else? And mix again? again. Not and mix. New jeans. Oh my girl. B day. I'm excited for a lot of those. Um, Let's go. Yes. We'll see you guys then, everyone. Bye. 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 Bye.